Hey, it's Greg here. And that's Kit. Hi. So this originally wasn't going to be the length of a podcast, Mm-mm. but I should have known better. So mm-hmm. this is the length of a fucking podcast. So welcome to uh, a very special end of year music discussion of the HR office podcast. Mm-hmm. So I don't remember what number it is, uh, but it'll be in the description down below. Can it be 69? Uh, I think we passed 69 already. No, I don't think we've hit 69 yet. We nice. can skip up to 69 if we <laughs> haven't hit 69. That's fine. Um, but no, so what you're going to listen to is us talking about our favorite music of the year. Kit and I are the, the bards of Hardest Reset. Um, us two, absolutely. Uh, and we just chat about our favorite music of the year and what we're excited for for 2021. Uh, things get a little heavy at times, a little... Uh, my, uh, mild trigger warning for mental health stuff. Um, there's no graphic detail, not in the least, but just to give you guys a little bit of a warning. Um, but uh, it wasn't originally going to be a podcast, but now it's a podcast. So enjoy the next uh, three to four hours of hot takes. Of hot takes. <laughs> uh, we're definitely recording this at the end and we want to go to bed. So I'm very tired. I know. Tomorrow. Ah, same. All right. So enjoy. Hope you guys love it. Love you. Meh. Hi, Kit. Hi, Greg. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. How are you? Ah, uh, dude, I've had a fucking week. I fractured my toe. Um, I'm exhausted. I'm running on three hours of sleep. Uh, but we're gonna record a video today, and yeah. it's gonna be a fun video. I hope either that or it's a fucking garbage fire. It's gonna be a garbage fire. Oh, shut the fuck up, thing. I'm okay. And, <laughs> anyway, so Kit, mm-hmm. a little background on this. So me. I, I love me some music. I love me lots of music. And until you became a part and the seventh member of Hardest Reset, I was the only one that ever really talked about music. Uh, we bonded over mm-hmm. our love of Sad Boy Screamo garbage. Uh, yep. Sad Boy Screamo metalcore bullshit. Listen, of uh, windmilling yet crying in the pit, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but also our love of just weird shit in EDM and you catching me up on goth shit and some fucking like electro core shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, but we bonded over a lot of similar genres of music. Yeah. And I finally have something to talk about music with. We yeah. talked about it with the concerts uh, a couple months ago, which was, oh, that was a fun video. Mm-hmm. It's a really good video. Um, But us being what I was consider the two bards of Hardest Reset, yeah. you and I, um, I figured... Why don't we hop on the fucking bandwagon? Choo choo. <laughs> woo woo indeed. Anyway, I, you said choo choo. <laughs> I said woo woo. Um, whoop whoop. Shout out to fucking juggalos and juggalettes. <laughs> uh, it's going to take five hours in order to get this video started. I hope you know. But anyway, us being the sad boy metalcore shit posts that we are. Um, we decided we're going to hop on the bandwagon and talk about our favorite records and music of 2021, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was a busy fucking year for music. Not only were we catching each other up on stuff that we missed. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't say who caught who up more. I caught him up more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's, well, here's the thing. You were yeah. talking, you gave a tiny bit of background for you. Yeah. A tiny bit of background for me is that I spent... I mean, I was no stranger to, like, the kinds of music that you caught me up on. Right. Like, you know, I still grew up on a lot of, like, screamo and metalcore and post-hardcore and punk and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, It's just that there was the era of time in which the vast majority of what's known as, like, the quintessential bands and albums... The 2006 to 2000... Well now <laughs> now yeah 2021 um, was for me was actually spent um just swaying back and forth in goth clubs and stomping okay. around um for a long time right um so you know i was listening to your 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 mid 2000s agro tech and dark right wave and, right yeah yeah um and i i missed a lot of music yeah so i was catching you up on that all the while this year was fucking insane for releases this year. And we've got some fun awards in between our favorite records. So we're doing a top 10 mm-hmm. favorite record of the year. We're going to open with some honorable mentions. Then we're going to go back and forth. We're each going to go like our number 10, our number nine. Then we'll throw in some awards. At one point, we'll talk about our favorite singles of the year, like individual singles. We're going to talk about our favorite EPs. Mm-hmm. All of it getting to the very end where we talk about our top records of the year. And then what we're excited for for 2022. Yeah. Uh, some of the some of the awards are serious awards. There's some, some like serious mm-hmm. like awards. Others are just dumb, fun shit posts. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So 
I say without further ado, I don't think there's anything else to, to explain here. Um, oh, there's one other caveat. Um, because we are fucking like gamer nerds and D and D nerds and shit like that. I know at least when I talk about some of my shit, I make playlists for my D and D characters. Uh, and this year was very busy <laughs> for a lot of playlists for a lot of characters. Uh, and uh, if I start making references to characters that make no sense, I will try to make it make sense. Uh, but it's because I'm just a fucking shitty sad boy D and D boy that loves his music and makes I think I have like I counted five playlists for Renfis mm-hmm. four playlists for my uh drow Ro- arcane trickster orgulus uh actual good playlist for Nick's Nicholas song uh three uh I've got a playlist for my dumb himbo tiefling paladin Damakos, that's literally because he's also had empty only big heart it's mm-hmm. just a five hour playlist of like nonsense and you the point of that is all my other playlists are in order of like storytelling and stuff that one's just put it on shuffle and see what the fuck you get right um but if i start referencing different things like that it's because i'm a fucking nerd and also tie it to things like that or also tie it to things that i am also just you know happen to me or that i relate to so that's fair i say without further ado mm-hmm. Uh, let's jump into our honorable mentions. So we're going to get started with honorable mentions. Uh, so our honorable mentions, you and I did it a little differently. Mm-hmm. Um, I ended up making a full on like top 30 records for myself. That was not the expectation. We both came up with our top 10. Mm-hmm. And then as we remembered and caught back up on other records and stuff like that, uh, we kind of ended up making like our honorable mentions kind yeah. of however you wanted to. So I did mine by making a Spotify playlist. Yeah. Right. Where the first ten out the first ten songs in that playlist correlate to my actual top organized 10. top ten right. in order. The rest of that playlist is like twenty, twenty one more songs, right? That are not really in a in order. structured order. They're yeah. kind of, but like just scattered about. Right. But then I also have another playlist that's called Year Contenders. And it's separate from my top singles and EPs too. And it's literally, that one's the leftover dregs from me scooping up what belonged in the right. top list. Yeah, and yeah. said, these are still staying here for honorable mentions. Yeah. And the way that I did it is I ended up making like a top 30. Number 30 to 15 is technically in, like, a very generic order. It's, like, not gospel. But my 15 to 11 are the five records in order that basically nearly disrupted my top 10. Mm-hmm. And those five ones are the super important ones that I'm going to have a little more information about. Uh, because those are the five that at some point we either jammed it and I went, uh-oh. Or I went back and re-listened to it and went, uh-oh. Uh-oh. So, do you want to do your honorable mentions first and speed around those, or do you want me to start with mine? It does not matter. Uh, Maybe, but I, there is something I do want to say, and, you know, it mm-hmm. should go without saying, and it should be incredibly obvious. Oh, yeah. But all of these are just our opinions of what we liked. We're not authorities on no. what's good. We're not critics on what's no. right or correct or good. Like, the- we're not here to rate and be a critic of anything we're here because we're like i like this one and it is uh, we are (laughs) very easy to please Mm -hmm. uh we are not very there is there will be uh, a section about hot takes Uh that i have for myself Uh a little later in the video Uh that i know people will not be happy about Uh um and it may or may not be related to gojira Mm -hmm. um but I am dumb idiot. Does song go good and make me happy? Yes, I like it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, you're talking to an idiot that liked your welcome from a day to remember. That should set your expectations. <laughs> um, but the thing is this. We're easy to please. We're not critics. Mm-hmm. We just love music. We love the music that we love. Um, my top 10 on this has an EDM record thrown in my top five uh, that people are going to be like, wait, what? And I have mm-hmm. a whole explanation about it. But uh, we just... I have a tendency to gravitate towards the albums that come out from bands at the point in their career when the fans go, ew, I don't like what they just made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. There's going to be quite a few releases that we're going to mm-hmm. be like, we know people didn't like this, but we fucking loved it, right? It's not... This is not meant to be... Listen... 
we're not the fucking needle drop. We're not Anthony Fantano. We're not actual music critics. We're not uh, various people within like the metal core scene that consider themselves critics, right? If I were to compare our list to any scene YouTuber, it's Nick Nocturnal who went, this thing made me happy because guitar and mm-hmm. it's cool. And oh, is, vocals, good. Is he also the one that shared an opinion about an award oh, I'm yes, going to be giving yes. out today? He's okay. the one. He's the one that made the mention of a certain band and mm-hmm. guitar. Mm-hmm. So yes, that is the same one. He is wonderful. And like, we're I'm just glad I'm not alone on this. No, right. Yeah. yeah as, a, as a boy who's been playing guitar as long as he has going... I just want to unlearn everything, you know, it's, it's, it's real. it was, it caught me off guard in the best way possible. And I went, I got to share this with kid, but yes. Um, cause he also is just like, listen, I liked my stuff. I mm-hmm. like all the stuff that I love. The things that I didn't like that came out was the stuff that I made. Don't listen to it. <laughs> like it's so good. Right. I, I subscribe to the Dave Grohl philosophy of there's no such thing as guilty pleasures. Absolutely. You just like what you like. Absolutely. And I also... It's just that I like garbage. I, I know. Same. Listen, yeah. the stuff that I like is also garbage. But what I legitimate wanna say, legitimately want to say is... Um, share your guys' favorite stuff of the year. Like, please. Like, and yeah. I and I know we didn't get to everything. I heard rumblings at the beginning of this year of a band called uh, Darko. That, mm-hmm. appara- that apparently we missed out on a fucking banger of a release from them. Um... Uh, and I know that there's plenty that we missed out. Like, I think Make Them Suffer had a record this year. The Plot and You had a record this year. All records we didn't get a chance mm-hmm. to listen to, right? That I, I had the, the, like, the echoings in the back of my mind of all the, like, dark wave and industrial that's coming yeah, back around. And, right. You know, like, fucking Blood Angel had, like, two releases. One was a cover. One was a full album. And I'm like, I didn't get around to those. Right. I had all year. I didn't get around to them. <laughs> You know what Dude, I mean? And there's too much. I know. Yeah. So, like, also share, if we don't mention a, a record, uh, it's m- most likely because we didn't get around to it. Yeah. Because we're just, we're idiots that are easy mm-hmm. to please. And we um, have ADHD. We both have massive ADHD. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. My <laughs> therapist was someone's like, I think you might have ADHD. And I'm like, no shit, sure. I would say, in, in my brain, I'm just like, you know, out loud, I'm just like, oh, yeah, no, that would make sense. And in my brain, I'm all... What made you fucking think that genius? Of course I know I've got it. And then I tell it to the family and my dad's the first one that sits there and goes, gee, what was his first clue, right? It's like, of course we deal with ADHD. Mm -hmm. So we're easy ADHD brain and just want like, oh man, fucking breakdown go, let's go. So, Dude, does it chug? Let's fucking Does it fucking chug? Let's go, right? Also, we don't know music theory or anything like that. So when we talk about, I don't, I don't. I, I don't I don't I don't know music theory. I failed music two times in school. Um, <laughs> right. But yeah, not yeah. for a lack of trying. It's not a complete was, empty circle. I it's, was told in freshman year of high school uh-huh. when I didn't know how to read music in music 101, mind you, mm-hmm. that if you don't know how to read music, you're going to fail this class, mm-hmm. which it's music 101 where they should be teaching you how to read music. Mm-hmm. And I went fuck that i'm out mm-hmm. never learned any ounce of even how to read music let alone any ounce of music theory so Here's i'm the gonna thing. talk about like dude the drums were fucking sick the one they went brr, brr, that was fun mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah. i'm not i'm not technical in the least so here's the thing that was not me defending being like a technical bro about no, it yeah, either yeah. because listen i've had so much more fun and like actual ability right to play the kind of things i want to play when I finally let myself not give a fuck about theory anymore. <laughs> right. And just have fun. So um, I think that's it on the quantifiers. Yeah. Uh, the reason why my opinion also shouldn't matter is I'm the drummer. My opinion doesn't matter. So <laughs> listen, I just hit things very hard and I have ADHD. So my opinion doesn't matter either. Why do you say that? Because I'm the drop D power cord kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's also You funny. have skill. Anyway, so let's dig into our honorable mention. <laughs> You're like debatable. <laughs> I was like debatable. I do not have skill. <laughs> let's agree to disagree. Anyway, so now that we've given enough quantifiers for people to lower their expectations because we're just garbage ADHD gremlins that are like, oh, we're easy to please. This thing had burp and went good. Anyway, so let's jump into our honorable mentions. Would you like to go first? Do you want oh, me to go first? Oh, boy. Um, 
Here's the thing about honorable mentions is that, like I said, I had a whole playlist of things that I went and sorted through. Right. And these are, there's, you say honorable mentions, which in most people's minds would be things that didn't quite make your top 10. Yes. But these are our things that didn't quite make our top 30. Is that what I'm understanding? No. So my honorable mentions are my top 30. Oh, then wow. I have way too many. Yes. please. Well, Should I thing. skip the ones that aren't in my 30? <laughs> <laughs> no, here's the thing. You could get those out of the way because I've got some that didn't make my top 30 anyway. I'm just going to really like good. rattle off band yeah, we just rattle, as I yeah. go down. And then when I get to my 30, I'll actually say mm. things. Oh, yeah. Here's no. the thing. Some of these are people who just put out a ton of singles. Right. No, that's so um, fair. So Memphis May Fire. Yeah. They technically had an EP because it's listed like that on Spotify. Right. But they were all singles this they, year, yeah. which they were fantastic, this, which I'll talk more about my favorite sure. of their singles. Some of these, the some singles. these are singles. Some of them are EPs. Some of them are albums, but I'm just rattling. No, yeah. Just, ra- just rattle off some artists. Um, Hell yeah. Circus Survive had a great EP. I uh, love it. Um, listen, Stoneburner, Eagle Likeness may not have had an album this year, but this guy did. He's on my tit. He did. <laughs> Hell um, yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna say what I've heard of it. This fucking single he dropped with uh, talking about. Listen, I'm not saying this guy's BD Cooper, but <laughs> sell out, yeah, <laughs> sell out um, was so good, so good. Um, Ludovico Technique. Speaking of right, we God, jammed a couple they, of the singles. Oh, yeah, yeah. they had some amazing singles this yeah. year. Like they, they fucking put out a he fucking put out a album of worth singles. It, like, album's worth of singles. And so right? good too. Mm-hmm. Um, After Our Animals. There's one that we've. We jammed it. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't that one of the, the TikTok mm-hmm. bands as we called it? We had a thing for people. If you hear us talk about, oh, that's one of the TikTok bands. Is there someone it's, that you found on TikTok that was like, yeah. here's some bands that have no listens. No no idea if any of these bands have any association with using TikTok. But the point was that it was a TikTok account that suggested them and they right. turned out to all be bangers. And basically it's like um, also like helping out like lesser known bands too. Mm-hmm. Just like this band has like 10,000 listens. Yeah. Uh, or less. and But they, they fucking fuck dude they're amazing um which another one of those that i discovered was sleeping dog um, mm-hmm. sleeping, sleeping dog was good fantastic. Sleeping, dog, sleeping dog was really good um, Absolutely. as it is yeah um, as it is as it is had a whole fucking ep mm-hmm. that was amazing uh was it another another band that i didn't have written down when i did it until i wake was another mm-hmm, one that was really mm-hmm. good yeah very very good mm-hmm. um i have asking alexandria's album in my honorable mentions and there's a reason and we'll get around to it i'm sure but you have more to talk about i have a tiny bit you like tiny they're, bit? they're not in my top 30 but like no. they'll definitely um great record uh what i will say is um it, on the opposite end of what my attempt is to my my top record of the mm-hmm. year um it is a polar opposite of my top record of the year was a record that's a very rough listen in the best way possible mm-hmm. uh i have not devoted the time because it is a very rough listen there are some yeah. mental health shit on that it, record that i'm not bashing on it it is mm-mm. fantastically mm-mm. written really good but it is given some of the shit i personally went through this year was rough <laughs> we listened to it together yes at a particular time for me mm-hmm. that made it so hard to go back to yeah Mm-hmm. It's in my honorable mentions, not because it wasn't good enough to be any higher, yeah. but because I could only listen to it once. No. Yeah. That is, I listened to it a second time and went, this is why I only listened to it a second time. It was rough in the, like this, there is some mental it health just, shit. Yeah. It just hit at just the right angle yeah. of something I was going through at the exact moment I listened to it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, animals as leaders. Yeah. They Fantastic. had, they had some fucking jams of singles this year. Hell yeah. Uh, listen, I've got varsity in here yes i do so do yeah. i i've got some varsity varsity featuring notions by the way that is uh, mm-hmm. an amazing amazing mm-hmm. which notions put out a record's worth of singles this year what a fucking boy listen Hell yeah um idols Ooh, um, yeah 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 uh-huh um the one that i actually have in here is uh is i believe a uh, metallica cover oh, oh yeah Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. Mm-hmm. They were on that fucking massive mm-hmm. like fifty three yeah. track at all these bands and artists that were influenced by the Black Album because mm-hmm. that was thirty years old last year. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let let that pause linger a little bit longer. Editing, Greg. Saving Vice. Saving Vice is good. Saving Vice um, had some good stuff. Coheed and Cambria Yo, came back around mm-hmm. with a couple singles. Coheed, I would say. Shoulders I, I, is on here. Shoulders right? is the mm-hmm. one that's on there. I loved both singles, but Shoulders was, was a fucking jam. <laughs> oh, uh-oh. Well, oh, 
Uh oh. We'll come. We'll come back around to that one. Which I don't. One? I don't need to put it in my honorable mentions because we'll come. We're coming back around. <laughs> I to it. have um, words. That's in my top thirty, my dude. Angels and airwaves. They did release they a record. Put out a I whole forgot to put the record. I forgot to put them on my playlist. <laughs> uh oh. I forgot to put a uh, fucking uh, abducted by aliens fucking Tom DeLong. Tom DeLong's a cryptid. Tom I say DeLong, that with love in Tom my heart. Tom DeLong is both a cryptid and a cryptid hunter, and he doesn't know he's hunting, he's himself. hunting himself. <laughs> and I mean that with all the love in the world because that was a great record. It listen, was. and I, I love I love I Tom love, DeLong. I, I love, love Tom. Angels and airways. Listen, you, did you say anal's and airways? <laughs> I love anal and airwaves. Wargasm. Wargasm. Salma Hayek. Salma Hayek was so good. Yeah. And also, we're going to talk about Milky Way in a little while. Good. Because I have an award related to her and a collab she did this year. Mm -hmm. And we'll also talk about that record too. But yes. Hell yeah. Wargasm was great. We need to listen more. We need to listen more. I think this one is much higher up on your... That is... I have, a, an, I have a lot. You have a lot. I have a lot. That is one of the records that nearly broke my top 10. Mm-hmm. And that's Don Broco. Mm-hmm. Don Broco, it was so good. I'm just, I'm a fan of Don Broco. And like, that was another one. There's a theme for a couple of them of like, I knew it was going to be fun, but I didn't think it'd be that high. Mm-hmm. And Don Broco was one of them. Absolutely. Um, Similar vein. Another one discovered thanks to a rec- recommendation mm-hmm. Um, is Donnie Jupp. Donnie Jeff, who also was at a for fans of mm-hmm. Don Broco, yeah. who had a great EP at the end of this year, which and was I amazing. And I was like, I know the couple of songs I've yeah. heard, like snippets of, yeah. were great, but then like more came out, and I went, I didn't expect it to be this like, fucking wait, good. What? Yeah. Oh my god. This is yeah. So good. Um, this is where I have my honorable mention Here that we go. you have words about whether we have them now or later. Is Gojira. Are we having this discussion now? We're putting a pin. We're okay. putting a pin in it. Okay. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. My The only thing I'm going to say about putting a pin in mm-hmm. Gojira for me mm-hmm. is that it's actually regrettably lower. It, yeah. should, it should be higher than it is. To give you credit, mm-hmm. you are a prog metal kid. Mm-hmm. You're a prog kid. You mm-hmm. were raised on prog and you mm-hmm. love your prog yeah, so and I prog do metal. Smoke weed. Thank you, you. So do I, mm-hmm. but I'm also I I'm I'm sad boy stoner. Mm-hmm. You're the like uh, you're both. You are mm-hmm. both sad boy but also yeah. the like let's fucking put on let's get high and listen to that test rack record that mm-hmm. I completely forgot that we listened to their live portals record this year. <laughs> we'll come back around to Gojira. We yes. have we have words. We have a discussion to have. We have combat like disagreeing Different. words. Yes, yes we do. Um Attila. They're not in my top 30. <laughs> are they an honorable mention for you? They are an honorable mention. Okay. Dude, dude. Mm-hmm. I think I need to pull the pin out of Gojira. Right okay, now. all right. I think we need Let's to have that discussion. Right, I'm putting my phone down. So one of the awards that we have this year, I say awards. One of the things that I have that is a shit award for me is hot take of the year. And that is Limp Biscuit and Attila put out better records than Gojira. <laughs> I'm sorry that a prog release that didn't have a record, that didn't have a song that broke six minutes felt bloated and boring half the time. Meanwhile, Mastodon's Hush and Grim was a fantastic release this year. I love Mastodon's Hush and Grim. That made it in my top 30. That made it. In your top, we we'll won't spoil. It, that made, that it, made high it high up. That's that made high it high up. That's high up for you. That's high for me, and so was I when I decided how how high it goes. <laughs> yup, I'm so I'm not surprised. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other quantifier for that is, I admittedly had not listened to Gojira since about 2008. Mm-hmm. Uh, the record with the art of dying was the last like release I listened to. Um, back when I was a shit kid that would download shit off of LimeWire, mm-hmm. right? But uh, and I loved Gojira. I loved the shit. There was I don't. And I will readily admit that I don't understand the musical progression of Gojira from twenty like two thousand eight to twenty twenty one. And this record was waxed poetic by it, so many people. It was And I do not understand one it. of the biggest hypes that ever came across any of my mm-hmm. feeds anywhere I yep. went. It was plastered yeah. everywhere halfway through the year, top metal album of the year. You know, it had yeah. just come out and it was, guys, yeah. best metal album of all time, question mark. And I'm yeah. like, 
not clickbait. Damn, I guess I'm missing out on something yeah. great here. Mm-hmm. And it took me a while to get around to it. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. On the first listen, I was really disappointed. Only because the hype. Yeah. It was so hyped as the greatest thing to ever happen. Yeah. And it just didn't quite hit that for me. Right. And I gave it some time. I gave it some time. And was it Christmas Day? <laughs> It was Christmas it was Day Christmas we had the conversation. Day because I worked at like five in the morning. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then, and then I came and I went home. to go see family. You went to go see family. So I was home alone Christmas Day, tired as fuck. Stoned as fuck. Stoned out of my brain. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just blasted off to space. I sat down. How was space, by the way? It was cold. <laughs> I <laughs> right? no, that's fair. decided to put on Gojira mm-hmm. and I went, that's not too bad. And I listen to Mastodon again. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. And then later on, sobered up mm-hmm. and listened to Gojira again and went, it's not that bad. It's pretty good. It's still not mm-hmm. the 10 out of 10 record that was hyped I... to me. So that's the only hot take about it I have is that it's not a 10 out of 10. It's like a seven or eight. And I'm the asshole that goes, I, I'm the one that had to come to terms with after first listen, I had no desire to listen to it again. Uh, to quote the Fantano meme, solid five for me. <laughs> solid five. Solid five. I did not like it. <laughs> and, it was just the hype for me. That's all it was. The and hype, here's the thing is I, about a week ago, mm-hmm. tried because I urged you. I was you like, urged you should me. probably yeah. listen, like, to should listen to it again. Because I went back on a second list and it was pretty good. I got to Amazon, like Amazonia. Is that the name of the song? Something like that. Uh, and I got bored and went back <laughs> to uh, listen Damn. to. I went. I got bored and went, went back to listen to Limp Bizkit. Still sucks. Um, no, that's not what I actually went back to go listen to. <laughs> but I would believe it. Yeah, no, you would. But no, my hot take is like, I did not like the Gojira record. I And I don't. And listen. No disrespect to people that loved that record. There is just something I don't get. There is something I don't get with that record. I really, really, there's something I don't get. I readily admit. I told you it's a shit take. It is my my hottest take of the you're year. Not, is you're that. not walking in here to say, you guys made something bad. You're no. walking in here to be like, I, I didn't don't get, get it. it. I don't get it. And that's fair because. I thought it was boring in my honest opinion, but I also understand that I'm not a prog kid. And that's also just fair because there's yeah. albums that come out in genres that I don't listen to in you know what i mean like just things that i don't touch yeah. like there's like a really good jazz record could come out and i'm just like guys i don't actually know anything about how yeah. to listen to jazz because right. apparently yeah. there's a way to listen to jazz and it's why I'm you're just watching like i'm sure movie. jazz musicians <laughs> yeah are over here like this is really this good is amazing. and yeah. i'm over here like does it gent though <laughs> Does it gent or does it have ska horns? Does it does it jazz with a D in front of it? <laughs> does it the jazz? <laughs> yeah, so that is my. <laughs> but yeah, that is my. Uh, I ha- I think I just needed to get that out of the way right now. That I was not a fan of Fortitude from Gojira. Yeah. I again solid five. That's fair. But I also understand that the main I reason like is I'm glad you do. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you were able to come <laughs> I'm glad you were able to come I'm glad that we have a dichotomy mm-hmm. on that that you were able to go back to it and went no it's not as bad like that's when I got the hype out of the way and then I was able to go back and like it and then I tried and got three tracks in and went I'm bored I'm I, and that's when I had to realize the okay this wasn't just the hype for me I just didn't like it and admittedly was the only record I didn't like this year um, and I'm also willing to admit, uh, and have an addendum discussion mm-hmm. when we do this again next year of mm-hmm. what are hot takes or records that maybe we went back to and went, this should have been higher or this should have been lower. You know what I mean? I'm sure. willing to check in every year and be like, you know what? I'm going to check in on this. Um, and let you know that like, and, and I hope that next year I go, Hey, you know what? I don't actually hate the Gojira record. It actually was the hype that really strongly ruined it for me. I hope that I come back around next year and I go, sorry guys, I smoked even more weed and I got too high and I discovered that actually it's not that good. 
What if we swap? What if we swap? <laughs> what if we swap? I don't know. <laughs> That'd be so weird. But uh, anyway. <laughs> um. Hey, remember this existed? A what? Uh, Gary Newman put out a record this year. It was around my birthday. I completely forgot that that even came out this year. Yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> it was good. I, loved it. I liked. I liked it when we listened to it. I liked it, but I just completely forgot that that came out this year. Yeah. It's not my absolute favorite mm-hmm. of his, right? Um, but it was good. It's good. It was really good. Yeah, it, it was yeah. Good. I was like, hell yeah! I enjoyed it when we listened to it. I yeah. will never turn down a modern day Gary Newman release. Hell no. Yeah. He's, the hell no is the hell no. I will not turn it down. Yeah. Hell yeah. He's we just will out here it. being a post-apocalyptic goth yep. cyborg. Mm-hmm. I love him. He's going to be there when the robots rise up. And I don't know what I'm on about, but I think he's going to institute. I want you to know that AI in uprising. like the 70s, um, <laughs> yeah. the early Gary Newman songs were about mm. like cyberpunk worlds. Right. But not in the sense of like some grand, like, I mean, maybe sometimes, but um, mm. I want you to know that he has like songs about like hiring robot prostitutes. Oh. Um, after that, I've got Manic from Wage War. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to go, speaking of hiring cyborg prostitutes, Wage War, <laughs> which is not related in the fucking least. No. And it's only down here is. The year contender honorable mentions. God, I still have my top 30 to go through. I'm so sorry. That's fair. That's um, fair. That's fair. It's only down here because, once again, it was something I, much like asking Alexandria, the difference is that I got a whole two listens out of Wage War. Mm-hmm. Um, still very difficult for me. That's fair. Still very difficult for me. Um, but I do quite enjoy it. It's very good. It's, it's very good. I just haven't top, been able to listen to it 30. enough yeah. to give it the fair shake of I putting it where it I was belongs. able to give it a fair shake mm-hmm. and it landed like fairly decent in my uh top thirty. And you'll when we get to my honorable mentions. Um are we ba- are we now finally in your top thirty? I have two more. Let's go. Let's go. And then I'll throw mine. Ginger and no effects. Um, Ginger, no effects. Yeah, yeah. no. Ginger, no effects. Absolutely. Ginger is one of those. Um, So other releases uh, this year. One. uh, So for my, for my, for my EDM friends, uh, I listened to it once and I did enjoy it. Uh, Olenium had a good record this year. Uh, I, but didn't get too many listens to out of it. Um, I think Idola is too smart for me. (laughs) I think I'm too stupid for Idola. Except for. Have you not. Did you not just stumble out of a philosophy class or a world religion class and walk I, into a swan core meetup? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the song with John Mess was amazing. The song yeah. with John Mess, by the way, when I put that on my list, uh-huh. is the one that I used to put um, it on amazing. here. Even though it's not ne- necessarily my favorite song on the record, it's the mm. one I used to put it I, on here. <laughs> I, I'm not saying that Idola is bad. It just didn't make it in my top this is 30. The only album of theirs you've heard or have you heard more from them this is the only album of theirs. okay so and but the thing is that like i listened to it and mm-hmm. it was good mm-hmm. it was good solid it's release the, the only thing I'll, I'll say is that you say it might be too smart for me the whole like exploring world religion aspect is mm-hmm. a consistent theme of the band right um, right and the thing is that like i think and we listened to it relatively late in the year like mm-hmm. a couple weeks before we got the end to of the it year. late we got to it very late and i will say the reason why it did not make my top 30 is because i wasn't able to sit and ruminate with it that's fair. Uh, one of my check-ins is i'm fairly certain uh one of my predictions of checking in is idola uh didn't make top 30 i'm willing to bet we're going to come back next year when we do this. And I'm going to go, Idola should have been top 30 for me. I will readily admit. Um, Rob Zombie released a record this year. Yeah. Uh-huh. That was a fun That's record. That's in my 30. That was, that was a fun record. Mm-hmm. Didn't I, It almost made my top 30. It didn't. Not because it wasn't good. There was just so much that came out this year. So much. There was so much that came out this year. You mentioned Ginger. Uh, Real Friends, 21 Pilots, Churches. Uh, I'm going to save that for an award. But I want to talk about Aim High in a mm-hmm. little bit. Because I have an award for Aim High. Um, Blue Stolly, uh, mm-hmm. Star Set. We didn't get to jam the full record, but we no. jammed singles from yeah. Star Set. And I love their fucking post apocalyptic hard rock with touches of like metalcore influence. Um, uh, We Are the Union did not make my top 30. That's a shame, but I get it. Not that it's not good. Mm-hmm. There is a personal reason as to why. Uh, mm-hmm. It hit at a time that I listened to it once and went, I don't think I can come back to this right now. Mm-hmm. 
and I know it's very good. I know it's very good. And then we jammed the single that also came out from them this year as well. Um, uh, let's see. That's getting into my top 30. Um, uh, you mentioned, uh, I see state champs had some singles that came out this year. Uh, notions had some singles. Uh, I'm really excited for that Jakey record that's coming out. Dead mouse had a record this year. Uh, and, uh, uh, Dead mouse had a record this year. Yeah. He actually ended up having like an EP that oh. technically counted. Um, uh, the word alive had a single this year. Mm-hmm. Papa Roach had swerve with fever three, three, three. Hell that yeah. That was really good. Nova twins had a single this year. Uh, being is an ocean had yeah. singles this year. I loved loss. Yeah. Lost was a great, great song. Um, varsity, you mentioned the notions, uh, feature, uh, mm-hmm. their cover of Montero is amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, corn had a single and I'm really excited for, yeah. and we'll talk about that at the very end of the video. I was say, are we into our, just our singles now or what are we doing? No, I'm just <laughs> okay. saying like, cause you also mentioned like singles and stuff like that. Yeah, that I have like, a separate list of singles. No, I have a top I, 30 separate no, list of singles. No, okay. and those are, I'm just curious. Those, those are the ones that okay. are like, but, um, also, but like, I'm also covering singles and records and stuff like that. Uh, I mentioned aim high Tom, Mor- Tom Morello's double album. Uh, came out yeah, this year. Yeah, I heard one song off of it, and I really and I would like that song. I would like to go back to the rest of the album. I just heard one song. It's it's good, but yeah. those are those are like honorable mentions mm-hmm. for me that did not make okay. my top thirty. Uh, let's transition into our top thirty. Okay, um, like our let thirty me, to our. <laughs> let me get out of as my single ready for that and go back to my as album. I as I get as you get ready for that. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go into my. Can I go ahead? Can I just make one note here, though? <laughs> Remember when I was like, "Wage War" was in my honorable mentions. It, right. Only reason it didn't make it into my top. Well, um, apparently, at some point in time, um, it, I see a couple other things on here too. I see one other thing on here too that uh-huh. I said was an honorable mention. That at some point in time, yeah. uh, I had decided to write down here at the very <laughs> the bottom here. Uh, I see, I see Wage War. War. You can also probably see that I have Gojira in my top three. <laughs> So at some point in time, I decided they do belong there, which is why I think this might actually be like a top 32 or 31 or something. That's fair. That's so fair. That's so good. All right. So you're 32 11. Before we get into our top 10, this is, I hope everyone hates this video. I hate this video. I hate this video. Let's keep I, making it. Let's keep making it. This is amazing. I told you we're super ADHD. Let's never stop making this video. Let's How never, long is it? It's going to be like three hours it's not going to actually be three hours but it's going to be i know i'm gonna gonna make it three hours oh no i gotta work tomorrow (laughs) same okay um so our top 30 Mm -hmm. uh i'll let you go first just kind of marathon 30 to 11 sure there's uh i gotta figure out where mine stops i always forget because i've i know exactly where i've moved my top like 15 around because my top 15 belong in my top 10 (laughs) <laughs> what does that even mean ten. my top 15 belong in my top 10 yeah i've got five records that i'm trying to cram in my top 10 because they're that good and i'm sad that they didn't make it oh. i rearranged this like five minutes before we started recording oh i'm certain i am fairly certain yeah all right um that should be correct i'm gonna double count again <laughs> while the editing greg let's just fast forward to this please <laughs> okay okay all right it ends on that one all right cool all right. i'm actually gonna because my phone's muted i'm gonna start that's playing fine. it that way i know which one it ends on okay Don't that's fair all right so your top 30 top 30 something something wage war yes bullet for my valentine these Hell are not yeah. in any particular order yeah, they're no, in a very fair. loose very loose yeah loose mm, order yeah. Um, a day to remember. Yeah. Rob Zombie. Mm-hmm. Gojira. Okay. White Chapel. Silent Planet. We'll talk about. Uh-huh. We'll talk about both of those in I my know. list. I'm very quiet because those two ranked very high in mm-hmm. my list. I'm not saying get, where. Get ready to also just realize that I don't know how to fucking make a playlist and actually take out the things from my honorable mentions. Um, after Uh-oh. Vola, I also have Don Broco. <laughs> 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 Tom Broco also made it. I love how um, this train wreck this is. It's so good. Porter Robinson. Porter. I will talk about Porter Robinson. Architects. Mm-hmm. Not sorry. Yeah, Architects. Hey, spoiler alert, people that said it wasn't a good record. It was a damn good record. Tetrarch. Tetrarch, yeah. Tetrarch. I was so Tetrarch excited was for them to put out more and music. I am so glad that they put out a really good record this I year. was really excited for them to put out more music well before they announced this record. I was like, man, when's Tetrarch going to... And then they blew mm-hmm. up with a music video and then i went oh they got uh-huh. attention maybe oh. that's a good sign mm-hmm. and it was and mm-hmm. i'm happy mm-hmm. absolutely 
Tillian. Tillian? Tillian had a Tillian record. Tillian didn't make it in my top 30. Oh, no. And I felt bad. I got Can't Swim. Can't Swim? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Can't Blue swim. Stolly. Blue Stolly, oh, yeah. Lovely. That was good. Loved it. Uh, Beartooth. Beartooth. There is a lot, I will say. Mm-hmm. Beartooth ranked very high for me. But also, I do want to know, uh, you were introduced to Beartooth this year and caught up on Beartooth this year. I've this been a f- year, last year, late last year, maybe late last year, early late this year, late twenty twenty into twenty twenty one is when I caught you up on Beartooth. Mm-hmm. Um, I have history with Beartooth, mm-hmm. and they did not disappoint with Below. Below was amazing, and I will say more when we get to that. Can I just me. say also, um, I added them to this list by using Skin, mm-hmm. and this is just a vague shout out to the fact that I have coworkers where I work that have been playing this song on our radio That's at so work, good. and it's just it's a jam. That's it's good. so good. Skin is so good. There's so many good songs off of um, that. Now we're in my top 15 where I get really angry because all of these belong. These belong in your top 10. So these are the five that didn't make it. In fact, these might surprise you that I'm over here grappling with these five Uh amongst what end up being my 10. The 10, yes. The Armed. Yeah. The Armed had a great record this year. That was a great record. Thrice. Yeah. Thrice put out an amazing record this year. It was so good. We are the union. We are the union, which I am shocked did not make your top 10. Mm-hmm. But I'm willing to bet because there's just so much good. Did I actually just jump from Beartooth to the armed? I'm asking you because I'm yes. ADHD. Okay. I missed, uh, <laughs> missed on saying turnstile. Turnstile. <laughs> Between yes. Beartooth and the armed was turnstile, turnstile at 15. I will, I will talk about turnstile because they were definitely mm-hmm. one. Uh, that, spoiler alert, did not make my top 10, but are in my top 15. Nearly destroyed mm-hmm. my top 10. <laughs> It Same. is so good. Shout out shout out to Hardcore making it onto Late Night with Seth Meyer. Shout out to... And everyone loving it. Shout out to Hardcore, but also it's New Wave and also it's post-punk. Mm-hmm. And oh, also absolutely. it's just Electronic. an 80s Casio keyboard. It is, um, it is a Casio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said We Are the Union. Yes. And then Trash Boat. Trash Boat. Trash Boat was in my top 10 like all year. And then it just... I tried to cram it in there so hard. I tried to keep it in there. And something happened late in this year okay. that I went. I'm excited. No, it can't. It <sighs> must go higher. Like this other. This it, other release yeah. has to go higher. Right. Yeah. Right. And is that your 15? That's my 15. That's, That's your 15. Yeah. Okay. So my 30. Uh, from in very loose 30 mm-hmm. to 15. Uh, can't swim. Foo Fighters. I I know you said in it's, your opinion you know what? it wasn't your favorite. It, it still belongs as an honorable mention, and I forgot to put it there. Mm-hmm. But you, my hot take is I was a little disappointed. That is your hot take, that you were a little I disappointed. I was a little disappointed. I think it was fantastic. It was really good. It wasn't bad. It was really good. Yeah. It's 29 out of 30, but there was so much that came out this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Limp Biscuit still sucks. Unironically love that record. That was and in, it's so crazy the, how many people were saying I unironically loved still sucks. Mm-hmm. Now remember, I had mentioned there were things I pointed at to you mm-hmm. and I went, We'll talk about this because uh-huh. that is in my honorable mentions. Yeah. It's, Dad it's, vibes was in my honorable mentions. Dad vibes. The whole record is so good. What yeah. I have on my playlist and the our our like playlist, however yours gets put out, um, will be your playlist that'll mm-hmm. be in the description. Oh, uh, I gotta put mine out. Oh no! <laughs> you don't have to if you don't. Want to. I just wasn't expecting to. You don't have to if you don't want to. I will. I'm I'll make my, a new one. You'll make a new one. That's fair. Um, the song I chose was "Out of Style," which that fucking bounce game was amazing on that. Uh, twenty-seven trivium in the court of the dragon, fantastic record. Twenty-six thrice, twenty-five bullet from my Valentine, mm-hmm. twenty-four hushed and grim from Mastodon. Twenty. This is where people will get pissed off. Twenty-four hushed and grim. Twenty-three. You're welcome from a day to remember. <laughs> Listen, it's in my top 30. I loved it. I make up for... Because mm-hmm. you were saying that because you put Mastodon under. Like it, literally right? Mastodon was yeah. 24. Uh, uh, a day to remember is 23. Yeah. Uh, ask me tomorrow. Mm-hmm. They'll probably switch. Yeah. Those are the... That's like, so why I ask said that like, as of right now, like it, this is where it's at, but this is very loose. 30 to 15. Ask me. Mm-hmm. Spoiler, not spoiler, not clickbait. Uh, uh-huh. Ask me in however many minutes uh, where oh. Mastodon is for me. That's what I'm saying. That sounds good. I'm very excited. Yeah. Um, uh, I did remember The Armed. Uh, that is uh, 22. Yeah, mm-hmm. 21. Tetrarch. 
20 trash boat my hot take on trash boat was wasn't as good as other releases in my personal opinion but it's not that it's a bad record it is fantastic the only thing that i have to say about it is that i had a very personal emotional connection to their first record yes or the Mm -hmm. You know the one I'm talking about. Yeah, the one with the uh, guys of a mother. Yes. Uh, train quarry. Yes. Stranger. Right. Yeah. Yes. The, ooh, fucking fantastic. Got it. Yeah. Got it on vinyl. Yeah. It's so good. And so good. It's not that this was by any means a bad or even worse album. It's just that there is a personal connection that was yeah, that's fair. missing on this one, except for one song. Which is he so good? Which is he so good? The song that I put on my playlist was mm-hmm. bad entertainment, Same. though, oh. and I have an award for bad entertainment. Mm-hmm. That is amazing. Uh, Nineteen caskets. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that is, deserves to be an honorable mention. That is such a good record. Uh, as something that I found as a sponsored post from Sirius XM <laughs> of them doing the live version of my favorite song off of that record, which was Glass Heart. That's a good um, one. Uh, 18, AFI, Bodies. Mm-hmm. Hey, another hot take. I really loved Bodies. Mm-hmm. No, it did not make my top 10, but it was really good. I have more to say about Bodies later. Uh, 17, Wage War. Mm-hmm. 16, Slaughter to Prevail. Uh, call us, Honorable mention. Call us Thome, however you say the name of that. Listen, those bad boys put mm-hmm. out one of my favorite breakdowns of the year, which was the fucking breakdown to Baba Yaga, my dude. So now these are my five. Yeah, these are my five that nearly broke. Mm-hmm. Nearly broke my top ten. Number 15, Vola, Witness. Vol- you want to talk about, like, no, I may not be a prog kid. Mm-hmm. But holy fuck, Vola was... I still... Sorry. Mm -hmm. I just... I still really want to share another album of theirs with you that I... That was my introduction to them that made me so hyped that I was so hyped for this new release, but I was like still trying to get you to go back to this other one too. I've heard a couple songs because they had a live... A live stream release Mm -hmm. that came out that they released my favorite song off of their new record, Inside Your Fur. But people... People... uh, People have shown... Uh, older songs and i went mm-hmm. if this is a sign of their older music holy fuck why did was i not introduced to vola by people earlier because they are so fucking good so number 15 vola uh number 14 uh amazing things from don broco yeah i loved that record so fucking much it was amazing 13 architects for those who wish to exist if there's a hard cut there is a reason why there is a hard cut <laughs> it's fine <laughs> i was able to keep the gojira rant but I did not want to put that in because that would actually start shit. Yeah. <laughs> Small, smaller channel punching up. Anyway, <laughs> uh, number 12, Turnstile, Glow, glow On. Mm-hmm. So good. Mm-hmm. Then number 11, mm-hmm. and it pains me this is number 11 for me um, because Sasscore is here, baby. Oh, I have more to say. I know you do. The Romance of Affliction from mm. Sea Space Cowboy is so good can i go ahead and spoil is your number 10 i'm not saying where in my top 10 it is but it is but i'm saying that that is the release that had to bump things out when it came out yes it is the release that i went no matter how hard i'm trying to keep these other things in my top 10 this is the album that said get the fuck out of here get the fuck (laughs) out of here the queen has arrived Connie Scarbosa lives rent free in my head, and I love her so fucking much. She lives rent free anywhere she fucking wants. She's a sass queen. She is a sass queen, and there might be an award related to that too. Anyway, but that is my number eleven. Uh, and of course, uh, how can you not have a record mm. that ranks very high with a clap clap in a breakdown? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That also one of the things that I will say, and I'm sure we'll talk about it when you talk about it in your top ten. Uh, what I love about this record, which it was so hard not to include this in my top 10, uh, it was the opposite for me. It was so hard for me not to include it, but my number 10, when I re-listened, said, sorry, see you, Space Cowboy, but mm-hmm. this, but Greg liked this slightly more. Slightly more. Very, very slightly more. But see you, Space Cowboy, The Romance of Affliction is so good because... On one end, it is nostalgic and feels like 2008 Electrocore and sass and yeah. incredible, but also does not feel like a dated, like trying to harken back to um, a time, right? That was way back. It was just incredible. And it was so good. It was so fucking good. 
but it just nearly got beaten out by uh, let's get into our top 10 i was gonna say what are we doing our top 10 or are we gonna talk about singles are we we will talk singles in a little bit okay we will talk singles okay but right now we're gonna uh-huh. talk our number 10 and number nine uh, okay okay my number 10 my number 10 is I, I'm allowing you to bring up your playlist with your, uh-huh. your 10. Well, it's interesting because um, I don't mean to peep. I mm-hmm. don't mean to peep. Mm-hmm. But remember when I said I did some rearrangement? Now, I didn't know your top. I didn't know the order of uh-huh. your top 10 right. when I did my rearrangement. Yes. But as I've sit, sat here and I look down and I don't mean to peep. I just see the album art right underneath Misinterpreting Constellations mm-hmm. or right underneath do we both have Romance the same of Affliction. I think that's the, yeah, you had yeah. Misinterpreting yes. Constellations as mm-hmm. a song on there. We have the same number 10. And this is where another one of our hot takes <laughs> come from. This is where I have to uh, remember the part where I said I come in and I go, you know, the album I like is the one where the fans went, fuck this one. Yes. Yeah. Three, two, one. Atreyu. Baptize. Yeah. Number 10. I have been a fan of Atreyu since about 2005, 2006. I've been a fan of Atreyu. (laughs) For all of a year. For for (laughs) For all all of of a year. (laughs) It's remember that part where I said that I was a sheltered Christian child and Mm -hmm. only ever got out by sneaking out to goth clubs. Mm Mm-hmm. So this was the year I discovered a tray. I mean, I knew they existed. You I'd knew heard, they had the vampire I'd record. Heard, I'd heard like the handful of like hit singles, yes. right? But like I had never had like a full album of theirs or anything yes. like that. And then I went to you and mm-hmm. I said, hey, they have a new record coming out that I'm very excited for. Yeah. Um, and I am also somebody that um, uh, I have always been an unabashed lover of a tray. Mm-hmm. I remember... 2007 when lead sales paper anchor came out and people went wait becoming the bull and blow sounds like songs that should that would be on fucking hard rock radio what the fuck this is fucking garbage meanwhile it was on repeat and one of my favorite records in my freshman year of high school um so i have been there to see so many of their releases be i say panned not by like critics have been lukewarm whatever but fans have always been back and forth and very opinionated about Atreyu. Yeah. But Baptize was a record that part of the reason why it's so good for me was how much of a middle finger to their former unclean vocalist uh, that it was because they had a very not amicable split in... Like, like a couple of years ago, like I was thinking it was like right before pandemic hit, they had a very inamicable, inamicable split. Mm-hmm. They didn't split on good terms. Yes. I'm not going to try to say that word again. Uh, they didn't split on good terms. And their former vocalist was like, they're going to go soft. They're not going to be good. Watch them. They, they're not going to be heavy with me not in the band anymore. And they went, hey, motherfucker, what do you think about Save Us? And what most of the fans our- would still agree that they didn't. Yeah. And. But fuck them. But fuck them. I love it. It was it's, so good. It's really good. I don't know what to say. Remember that part where we're easy to please and we go, I don't know. I just like the thing. Dude, Atreyu went brr and it was good. <laughs> <laughs> That's my review. That, um, is, that is my review. No, I, I just loved it. It was so it was so good. And I think part of why I loved it and mm-hmm. what people are going to realize about when we talk about our releases Mm -hmm. and like how we talk about things you was like i'm gonna be the one that talks way too long about releases and you're gonna be the one that goes hey it was good and it fucks and i loved it uh but you'll also have some other things i mean sure yeah uh, yeah i just in terms of like baptized by Mm -hmm. treyu yes um i also want to go ahead and it's not this isn't this isn't a real award guys Uh it's just that it has one of the song that I think I maybe possibly cried to the most. Oh, and what song this, is that one? This entire fucking year. Like, can you, like, imagine all the emotional shit that came out this year, yeah. all the, like, mm-hmm. mental health records and things that I've listened to, and all of the, all the life changes I had this past year. Mm-hmm. I think 
the only I say the song I cried to the most this year that came out this year. Yeah. That came out this year is the stipulation. The song I absolutely cried to the most this year was was a previous trash boat record we talked about. But Yes. Um and I know the song specifically. I know the two songs. They're back to back that go into each other and they were amazing. Yes. Um But the song that came out this year that you cried to the most was Stay. Yeah. That is there there is a lot of not only are they having fun, but they also are still very real on there. Yeah. Like there's still a lot of emotion on it. And I think that's why I loved it so much. Yeah. I think that's why I loved it so much. Yeah. And shout out to the one that I actually used to add it to my list was Sabotage Me. Sabotage which Me is so has good. Just just a little just a little touch, a little like mm-hmm. I don't know. It, just just enough to please the little like goth kid etherealness you mm-hmm. know no the um, yeah yeah mm-hmm. and we'll talk about that as to one of my top three mm. that there is a, a record that has a lot of ambient usage uh that i think also adds to it and i, I won't i'll talk about that later but uh that record is this record baptize mm-hmm. uh i put the title track on mine um it is so good it would that ended up being my favorite that i had on repeat the most um and it's because also the being the fucking D&D nerd, anyone who keeps up with the homebrewers, Baptize is track two on the most recent Renfist playlist. The Strange Powers of Prophecy mm-hmm. into Baptize start off the most current Renfist playlist. And Renfist is a character that I play in our D&D series, the homebrewers, uh, who basically started out as all of my worst traits thrown into one character because I wasn't going to therapy. Um, but as I actually went to professional therapy this year, while also playing very thera- ver- therapy needing characters in Dungeons and Dragons this year, um, it made me so happy to finally ha- be cresting the hill of sad shit. And while yes, Renfist will always be a sad boy, um, Baptize is the one that kind of just like, is that song of I've done some shit, but I'm atoning for it for it. And that whole vibe is so good. And I loved it so much. And mm-hmm. it landed number 10 for a reason. It's fantastic. I think it's interesting. I didn't come in here expecting to talk D and D playlists at all. Mm-hmm. But the interesting thing is not only did we have this, the same record on our top 10, but mm-hmm. it's the one, I think the one song that I can go. Yeah. Because stay is also on my playlist for Thrace, who is my, Sad, sad bard, bird, my sad, sad bo- my sad black bird, bard, Your sad king bard, black king bard, yeah. The like mixture of um, Orpheus and uh, Robert Smith. Um, yeah, yeah, no. Uh, Thrace, mm-hmm. Thrace is my sad black bird, mm-hmm. and um, without going into too much detail mm-hmm. and spoiling too much about his character that I don't know yet, that I will learn because we're playing yeah. the game together. If you can gather that I'm, song is part of the mm-hmm. plot of you know that character that yeah. character and i know and why and i can yeah, kind of know why yeah yeah it's good it's i mean it's sad it's sad and it hits hard not just for a fictional character but for someone it reminds me of and mm-hmm. but yeah it is um that touch was great it That's was both our number tens number nine number nine number nine <sighs> if you were to if you ask me tomorrow, mm-hmm. this record would be higher. Mm-hmm. But today it is, and I think with how it's how this one, because the top half of my list, numbers five through one, stayed consistent in their placement mm-hmm. when I finally was making the list. Um, but if you were to ask me, this record would be higher tomorrow, lower the next day. Um, but it is Era's self-titled record is my Mm. number nine interesting it is the record hat this record has my favorite breakdown of the year yeah which is snow blood and i know people are going to scream but the single technically came out last year and yes i know but the record came out this year (laughs) but it is my favorite breakdown they also had um, one of the most beautiful choruses of the year with Vanish Canvas. Mm-hmm. Um, Shout out to being in the crowd. Yes, when we for saw them. Vanish mm-hmm. Canvas live in concert, watching my best friend 
crowd surf over ahead of me while while I am locked eyes with their other vocalist with uh JT with JT yeah editing Greg will correct this if that's not his name I think it's JT JT is his name yeah what like locked eyes with each other he's not in like in Mike we're both just having a moment Mm -hmm. appreciating Jesse Cash's beautiful fucking verse yes Uh uh-huh I don't know what else to say. It's that song so is Fantasy enchanted. Fantasy is so good. It, it really is. It's a um, magical moment. Divisionary has some of the best like leads. And like I say, they weren't gang vocals, mm-hmm. but usage of uh, crowd underlying chanting yes. in a song. Mm-hmm. Um, dude, I'm a slut for triplets. And there's so many triplets. <laughs> That tweet. That's a tweet that you posted. <laughs> it was. That was something that was like, was this something? Out of context, th- this is bad. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I love triplet beats. Mm, there it's, you go. Uh, it There's is, the missing word. <laughs> it is It is why, as a drummer, uh, swing triplet beats uh, and metalcore bands like Era this year and a couple years ago, Bad Omens mm-hmm. with Dethrone, one mm-hmm. of my favorite songs from theirs of all time. That swing beat the is swing what beat. made me feel fall in love with bad omens you yeah s- it's already that song fucks but the fact that it fucked that hard i went i'm sticking around like no yeah i gotta stick i'm around. sticking around i'm going on ebay i'm looking for that t-shirt they had the really tiny print text <laughs> really like tiny. i want it so bad <laughs> <laughs> really tiny print. yeah it's if you so, know you know if you know you know um and it's it was just it's fantastic the instrumentation is great um not just the back and forth between jt and jesse uh on screams and cleans but the lyrical content is so good um and it's just really good yeah. it is so good it is is well written mm-hmm. uh lyrically and instrumentally and balance wise yeah so good and I, also shout out to the version of vanish canvas with Courtney the plant yes from Spirit Box. yes she kills it on that it's so, so good. good so good we're yeah. gonna be talking a lot about Courtney and the plant yeah. throughout this video i and yeah era Era ranks for me too. Um, and you'll have more to say. I'll have more to say. Just, yeah. You'll have more to say. What Just is remind my ADHD brain that I haven't said it all when we get there because I've no, been thinking fine. about it a lot. So I'm going to think you that I said, said it. You haven't said much of any of it. You haven't said much of any of it. So what is your number nine? So my number nine is actually Idola. Ooh, okay. Yeah. It yeah. was higher. Okay. Short, right after it came out, you and I jammed it together. I think mm-hmm. you were at work. And you said you and listened we, to it so much more. And right? as soon as we got done with like jams for the day. Which for people who don't know, uh, every Friday we jam music together um, and stay caught up on. We were uh, doing that on records. a Wednesday, I think, because you were and, literally in the office. And what it was was because so I work from home four out of five days of the week, but I have one day a week that I go in. Uh, and that wasn't even a Friday jam day because we were playing fuck loads of catch up mm-hmm. because we had a lot of like between concerts and events and things going on in our personal life. We actually got backed up and we needed to catch up and we had finished catching up and then like we had finished a majority of the catching up. And I think we had like Idola and Bullet for My Valentine mm-hmm. and a couple other like end of year releases we hadn't listened to, whether it was singles or singles eps are full full lengths yeah uh and that was one of those i'm like hey it's a wednesday i'm like i'm at the office you're off today let's just jam and that was one yeah. of the ones that we jammed and so it I was, was number nine but go ahead yeah it it we got done with our jams for the day and normally when we have jam days mm-hmm. where it's like hey we catch up on stuff we share stuff whatever yeah i'd say 80 percent of the time mm-hmm. i end up as soon as we're done with jams my adhd brain has something it wants to listen to that's something that I already know, uh-huh. like from before. And I'm like, I go, these are great. I'm going to save these to my library and I'll come back around to them. But right now I just, my brain is screaming. I got to listen to this emo album from 2005, like right now. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to die. Hey, I need um, I need to re-listen to Billy Talent or mm-hmm. uh, Alkaline Trio or I do. Fall are, are you Boy. Are you calling me out? Because I legitimately do. I no, I'm just saying what I have seen you do okay. and I fucking love it. All right, good. Because he's... Fallout Boy's on my desk, and he's gonna be real mad. Sorry <laughs> about that time I bumped the mic. <laughs> it's all good, but no. Um, 
I do the same thing. I'll be like, listen, <laughs> these are great records, but hey, I got to go it, back and re-listen to That's the Spirit from Bring Me the Horizon. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> same though, um, right? Or, Semper, or Sandpit Turtle. This um, is Sandpit Turtle. This is Sandpit Turtle. Will <laughs> um, we ever see the end? Shouts out to so, Sandpit Turtle. Anyway, I don't so, After we finished jamming it that day. After we finished jamming it that day. After we finished jamming it that day. Uncharacteristically, I said... I'm going to go listen to the Idola record again. And mm-hmm. I didn't just go back to it one more time. Mm-hmm. I did something I don't do. I put it on repeat. Yeah. I put it on repeat yeah. like 10 uh-huh. times. Right. And, and you don't I, usually do that. I was just off in my own world. I was like cleaning my room. I was like redoing my altar. Mm-hmm. I was like, there was a lot like happening. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was just like every time it would loop back through, I'd catch something new about it. Yeah. And it just like, it stayed in my top five until this past week like it right once the like infatuation Mm -hmm. of this new thing wore off and you got to assess it i got to like assess it Mm -hmm. i was like at least it's still in my top 10 yeah that made me happy it is something that i know for a fact that's why i made the quantifier of no it did not make my top 30 but catch me this time next year when we're talking about our favorite releases of 2022 and my addendum for this year, I know for a fact it's going to at least break top 20. If not be like, ooh, mm-hmm. this might have also been top 15. Um, I will definitely say my top 10 is solid in my top 10 and it won't break top 10. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 when we did listen to it, it was very good. Yeah. It was very my... good. And I say I'm too dumb for it. <laughs> Uh, and that is too smart for me. It's not that I can't grasp the concepts. It's I also listen to it at the end of the year with a lot of ber- personal burnout from work. And it is a record that I want the mental energy to just sit down yeah, and give it the attention it deserves because it deserves that attention because I know it is well written and mm-hmm. very good. I mm-hmm. know it is well written and very good. Yeah. It's also just... It's also I, Swancore. Do you even know what Swancore is? Bro, do you, is? Bro, bro, do do you, you even... even Swancore? Yeah, of course. It's my favorite genre. So another thing about it, though, is that with Idola and just these, mm-hmm. you know, it. I don't... I don't know. And I mean, this goes for everything. I don't ever know what purpose something is written for and right. what angle it's written for. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like what... Right, yeah. Um, But... As someone who was born and raised religious, but I was never spiritual. Right. And as an adult, am a different kind of spiritual, but not religious. Yeah. Um, but has always had a fascination therein around. Um, mm-hmm. That there's there's just something about the theming right. that draws me into it. Right. Even, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's all. Just things that's of really good. things yeah. of ancient and world religion theming mm. will always draw me in. Um, it's always fascinating to me. Yeah, and I that's why I said I want to give it the attention that I know it deserves because it it was the the the, the lyrical content seems very fascinating and I like I want to give it more attention and it 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 was good and like I said I want to I know my addendum is going to be that it definitely ranks higher for me and I know that I will give it the time when I'm not dealing with personal life stuff so i can give it the attention it so absolutely deserves um but it is good and that is your number nine yeah and instrumentally it fucks it's so good it is so good hey are you ready for an award are you ready to do an award an award sure i'm ready to do an award i'm gonna do a i'm gonna do a serious award and i'm gonna do a funny award oh a funny haha funny haha okay um my my serious award Uh uh-huh my serious award is um, breakout artist that deserves all the attention. Mm. May or may not die into what my number eight is. Um, and it's absolutely fucking Lily Spirit Box. Hell yeah. There are some people that are like, Spirit Box didn't pay their dues. They just kind of struck it. They, so they struck it. They struck the iron in 2020 with Holy Roller and then got really viral and popular and lucked out to which I remember Courtney being the quote unquote, not as good replacement vocalist for I wrestled a bear once. Mm-hmm. And I remember when her and her husband left to start spirit box in like 20, they left in like 2015 before I wrestled a bear once broke up and then they started spirit box Technically in like 2016, 2017, and then just 
whether it was personal struggle or record label struggle, I don't fucking know, but they kind of put out some releases and then dipped a little bit. And then we're like, all right, cool. It's end of 19. We're going to write our record in 2020 and 2020 is going to be our year. And then the fucking pandemic happened and they went, oh, fuck. Okay. All right. Well, um, and then they finally put out an incredible record in, uh, Eternal Blue, mm-hmm. which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and I think my serious award is Spirit Box's most deserved breakout artist of the year, in my personal opinion. Okay. And surprisingly tied mm-hmm. to Spirit Box for my funny award, Fred Durst is my best dad of the year. <laughs> yes, Fred Durst is dad of the year. Dad of the year goes to Fred mm-hmm. Durst. And why it ties to Spirit Box oh, no. is that photo of oh. Fred Durst and Courtney LaPlante of when you, it's, when you dad, take your when when dad takes, takes your dot take when when your when your when dad, your dad takes, takes you to your, your first, first concert warp, yeah, your, to your first warp tour or whatever to your first warp tour or your yeah. first concert I've seen different variations of it and it's just it was the the, the tour promo photo mm-hmm. for uh because it, it was Limp Bizkit and Spirit Box were playing together and then because how COVID being COVID they ended up canceling the second half um which my other uh. Uh, my third, my third little si- side award is mm-hmm. uh, uh, um, cool guys of the year vocalist from Shine Down as well as we came as Romans for the vocalist of Shine Down just giving Spirit Box ten thousand bucks when oh. um, Spirit Box and Limp Bizkit canceled their tour. Mm-hmm. He went, I've been there, done that. I know what it's like trying to tour and especially getting back on the road. Just take ten thousand bucks. Here you fucking go. And I was mm. fucking cool guy of the year. Uh, and then we came as Romans. Spirit Box used their lighting rig, mm-hmm. uh, and they were gonna pay for it. I think the the deal was they were gonna pay for it at the end of the year. Uh, they just waived it. We came as Romans. Just said, don't fucking worry about it. We get it. it. It's all good. You don't need to pay for shit. So cool people of the year. Like fucking fucking cool moves of the year with that shit. Um, do you have any awards you want to? jump in this year um, for right now i have a serious award okay that i want to give because you've already talked about them mm-hmm. so i have an award for i have a serious award and i have a shit post award mm-hmm. but i'm awarding them to the same person <laughs> okay Okay, I think I may know where you're going with this. So I have a serious award of best guitarist of the year. Okay. As well as the shit post award of guitarist that made me want to throw my guitar in a lake and quit playing forever. And also made, I think I know where you're going, is mm-hmm. it the same guitarist mm-hmm. that YouTuber Nick Nocturnal says that he wants to get rid of all of his guitars, <laughs> then go uh-huh. to the, 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 the guitar guild <laughs> and the uh-huh. in the MMO of life <laughs> and tell him to unlearn all uh-huh. his skills? Is it... Uh huh. I'm giving both of these awards to Jesse Cash of Era. Right. Um, yup. Uh huh. It's not possible to be that good and also sing <laughs> and like also an angel. sing. Yes. And yeah. write those amazing songs. I. <sighs> yeah. How fucking how? That's it, the. There's so many times when something is like really good like someone's really skilled at something yeah. right and i have that like initial reaction where i'm just like man i should just give up which is like a half joking right it's like it's i've like, been there yeah yeah no, but it's I've just been like there. man yeah. fuck that it's no it's yeah. fuck this guy he's too good you know what i mean <laughs> yeah no um, he's too is, talented and amazing and wonderful yeah. fuck this guy no yeah i get it yeah but this is one yeah. of those moments where i'm just like at least i can seriously take a step back and go I'm not alone on this one. This is some weird shit. Y'all are seeing this, right? Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. But also at the same time, just listening to Era, while not in the sense of I'm going to imitate that and do it because of this and do it in this way. Yeah. But listening to Era, they were one of the bands that helped spark me wanting to play more do more yeah no be better (laughs) than i am not necessarily in the same fashion because impossible um but you know what i mean yeah no yeah i get you yeah Yeah, it's one of those like they influence you but also you want to give the shit post of i want to throw all my gonna snap my guitar in half yeah i mean it's a beautiful guitar it's a shame that it's gonna fucking die and go to a fucking there it is it's off to the great guitar center in the sky (laughs) Number eight for number me. Number eight. My number eight favorite record of all time uh, is also from my breakout artist of the year. Just mm. throw it out. Mm-hmm. It is Eternal Blue from Spirit wow. Box. It is so 
fucking good. And it is one of four records this year. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is one of two records that other people had massive hype around. And in my opinion, exceeded that hype. The other one is my number one record. And we'll get to that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, this record had a lot of hype behind it from the scene. A lot of people within the whole scene, scene mm-hmm. was like, this is going to be like the record to watch out for. Various metal sites and alternative sites were just like, this is the record to watch out for. And it had a lot of hype. And I remember kind of going to you. I'm like, hey, have you heard of this band Spirit Box? And you're just like, I've seen the name around. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, at first I was hesitant. I was, I was like, okay. And then the second time I brought it up was when I got it, kind of got over the hype, like that got over my mm-hmm. hurdle of, cause I, I really get critical about hype, which is I think part of the reason why I was so hypercritical of the Gojira record. Um, that when something is very, very hyped and it's not just in music, it's just in everything. Mm-hmm. I get so hyper fucking critical on it. Right. Sure. Um, this is one of the few cases it exceeded the expectations and the hype. I have other records that I personally get hyped for mm-hmm. and definitely lift up. Atreyu is one of them. My number seven is another one of those. Uh, and my number six and my five, four, three, two, and one. But no, uh, specifically my number seven and six were two that were kind of personal. Like I'm super hyped for it and exceeded my expectations. Um, but that record's so good. And if there's one record or if one song off the record, it's the song I put on the playlist that not only is my favorite, but I think encapsulates Everything you can expect on the record, it's the opening track, Sun Killer. Sun Killer is good. Sun Killer is my favorite song. I also love Circle With You, Holy Roller, um, Hurt You, mm-hmm. uh, Yellow Jacket. I'm When I talk about collabs uh. of the year, Courtney LaPlante and Sam Carter are just yeah. uh, wonderful. And I remember when we went to go listen to it and I looked at you and went, Sam Carter's on track three. And you went, yeah. uh, yeah. okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. This is already a good yeah. sign, right? From Final Fantasy fourteen, Sam yes. Carter? S- Sam Carter, singer of the, the, the uh, uh, my brain just died. <laughs> singer of the beginning, of the beginning, the theme. <laughs> That's the word I'm looking for. The theme of Final we're Fantasy fourteen and Walker. We are, I'm surviving on three hours asleep but no i think sun killer is a perfect representation it's got the melody and slower grooves that are found on the slower songs on the record and it's got the heaviness that's found on the heavier songs of the record encapsulated in a Mm -hmm. masterpiece of a song off that record and is my personal favorite but also no disrespect to all of the other tracks on the record because it it is a damn good record so that is my number eight what is your number eight kid my number eight is one that has very much fluctuated all over my list over time. Okay. Um, it's been higher. It's been lower. It's sometimes not been in my top 10, but it's mostly been in my top 10 the mm-hmm. whole time. Right. My number eight. My number eight is Sleep Token. Oh, I have more that I will say about Sleep Token because it ranked higher in my list. Mm-hmm. Um, You introduced me to Sleep Token. I did. You did so with um I I the, I handed you Sundowning. Sundowning, that's the name of the album. I couldn't think of the name of the album. I'm I handed sorry. you Sundowning because yeah. that's what I was obsessed with. And even mm-hmm. at the time I hadn't gone back to No, I handed you Jaws. You handed Jaws was the very first song I ever shared with you at the yeah. end of twenty twenty. And then after that I went, Oh wait, you this jaws, boy actually likes I what this was i couldn't remember if either jaws or sugar was the first song you shared with me jaws was the first one and okay. then i handed you sundowning, sundowning. like immediately okay. after when you went yo this is really good i went yeah oh okay this i'm is, obsessed with this record <laughs> when we talk about us jamming things together mm-hmm. this was what started it yeah was, was sleep you token. sent me sleep token and then we went let's pick a day where we can jam this whole album together that's what started it and yeah, that's absolutely. what started yeah our friendship basically mm-hmm. it started our us our actually close... like hardcore bonding over music yeah. Really. Uh-huh. yeah it really um, kind so... of just, the, the sleep token is very important mm-hmm. to us sleep token holds a very special place in absolutely. my heart absolutely yeah and i wanted this record to be even higher than it is mm-hmm but that doesn't mean it's bad. I mean, look at how high I praise things that didn't even make my top 30. All of these records are fucking amazing. There's just, I think one of it's, the other quantifiers is there was so much that came out this year. Mm-hmm. It was 
stupid how much good shit came out this year. And I think it's less of a knock on sleep token and more of a testament to 2021 in the scene as a whole of music that we listen to Mm -hmm. as to how much Mm -hmm. chef's kiss music came out this year. Yeah. There's people have spent their plague chasing their renaissance, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, commendably, they've done it Mm -hmm. well. Absolutely. Um, Yeah. It sleep token. The only thing that I'll say is that I can understand yeah. where people come from in the criticism they have of the album in saying, "Oh, it's front loaded with bangers," and yes. then it gets boring. The only thing I refute that with, and I know that you actually agree with me on this, mm-hmm. is that it follows a story arc. While musically, it, I guess I'll I'll I'll, ta- I'll mention. You mentioned understanding the criticism, and I'm wanna, I'll want i mention it now since you brought it up uh, for whenever I talk about it. Mm-hmm. So that way it's just out of the way so I could just gush about how yeah. much I fucking love This Place Will Become Your Tomb. I understand instrumentally there are pacing issues because it is front-loaded mm-hmm. with the heavier tracks and the slower ambient stuff mm-hmm. that Sleep Token is also very much known for, that it's not a left-field thing. No. Fill up the... Once you get past Alkaline, mm-hmm. there is a wave of the more ambient, vibey shit, right? Spoiler alert. My favorite song on the record is a later song. My favorite song that I is used to add on here is High Water. High Water is um, great. Telamara is, is one of my favorites. The um, thing is, is you say like, oh yeah, it does hit the, like the, it starts out the really strong and then it hits in the like mellowed out kind of, yeah. and then there's, it gets rocky at the end still again. And yes. you know what I mean? Um, but there's a lot of love and loss in this record. Yes. And Hey guys, I don't know if you've ever like loved and lost, loved and lost, but it kind of burns bright and hard and then kind of mellows yeah. out and almost I, like this fucking record. And does. I will get into that where instrumentally if you're just looking at it instrumentally it is front loaded heavier and back end is very much lighter and i can understand while 100 percent disagreeing with people not liking that it isn't it isn't but it should be approached the same way as a concept album Mm -hmm. yes because it's not mixed and arranged for peak consumption it's mixed and arranged for artistic purpose yes absolutely um when this video goes out there will be a link to it'll be the sleep token article there was an article somebody wrote and i forgot what site it was talking about um sleep token wrote it's basically along the lines of sleep token captured the good and bad of humanity in a wonderful record and it goes into way more flowery language than we're ever qualified to ever go into about how it is a record about humanity and love and loss and everything in between it is a record about humanity and it's Mm -hmm. it's it's a wonderful write-up of like someone who like it was a record they loved front to back and kind of just gushed about how that concept your idea that it's not but it is a concept Mm -hmm. record in a sense so yeah it's like it's not but it should be treated like one almost absolutely yeah Yeah, you should go into it it is definitely a front to back listen i would absolutely say uh you may not come back to it after listening to it going from the front to back method you may come back to different songs and i'll talk about that when i talk about what i love about it I'm typically someone who puts on a record and listens to it front to back. And I go, I like this. Like when we were talking about these albums, you know, it's because I'm ranking them up here because I'm like, yeah, front to back this entire album as it's presented. You know what I mean? But that doesn't mean that I don't sometimes put on Sleep Token and skip around to my favorite songs. Like, mm-hmm. I, I'll still do and that. I also did the same thing with Sundowning. Yeah. I've listened to Sundowning front to back, and I've also just had Higher, Sugar, and mm-hmm. The Offering on loop. Yeah. Um, or I cried at Levitate mm-hmm. for the millionth time. Sometimes um, you put on Levitate. Sometimes you, you just skip on, straight to Gods, and you just fucking lose your fucking mind. You just flare your arms. And then yeah. you also go back to uh, crying over Bloodsport. You know, or you just lose your fucking shit listening to uh, EP2 mm-hmm. for the millionth time or wanting to fuck to Jaws. Um, anyway, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I want to fuck to this Sleep Token record. We're anyway. going to fuck at a Sleep Token concert. <laughs> so my number seven. <laughs> 
not us. Just we're both gonna fuck. I'm gonna fuck my. Uh-huh. At the time, sleep token eventually comes out <laughs> here. My wife uh-huh. to sleep token at a sleep uh-huh. token show, and then you'll fuck a wonderful significant other in the future. So my number seven. Uh-huh. <laughs> so my number seven. Uh-huh. There's no way to transition from no. that into one of my many mental health records. Um, my number seven. Uh, there's also going to be another theme in this that uh, I'm going to be saying a lot as we get into the top part of our list that um, I'm going to be saying a lot of this record was way higher before October and November happened Mm, mm because October and November really ruined my list with Mm. a lot of fantastic releases. Um, Number seven before October hit was in my top three. Then October hit and it was in my top five Mm -hmm. and then November hit and I went, uh Oh, it's still in my top 10, but where does it rank? Yeah. Um, And it's below from Beartooth. Mm. Being a fan of Beartooth since 2014, I have been uh, a fan of this band, a fan of Caleb Shomo for so long. And being a fan, watching them grow and watching Caleb Shomo not just become more confident and comfortable in his um, ability to perform live and also in studio because uh, he struggled early on, but then started going to vocal coaching and shit and has just been uh, nailing it out of the park. In fact, one of the things we did while I was working from home one day is we listened to a bunch of sets from Welcome to Rockville in November. And one of them was the Beartooth set. And he's just he's at the top of his fucking game right now. Um, I recommend people listening to that and then go to the Wage War set and listen to Caleb Shomo come out for the breakdown of High Horse, which can I say High Horse High Horse is such a good song, Mm -hmm. but to have Caleb Shomo scream like the band's already hyped and then Caleb Shomo just fucking Olympic sprinter Mm -hmm. runs out and is fucking doing a fucking gym routine Mm -hmm. on stage stage for just a minute and a half Mm -hmm. minute and some change maybe not even a minute and a half and an already hype crowd getting 10 times more hype like he's already on top of it but it is one of many mental health records that i love um the song that i chose for the playlist was the song i listened to the most and that is the past is dead Mm -hmm. but you've got devastation fed up hell of it in that ending instrumental of the last riff is fantastic skin is incredible um, the title track that opens it up below is amazing. There are so many good songs off of this record. Um, but there was something about when The Past is Dead came out as a single that I was already hyped because it's more Beartooth. And anytime a Beartooth record comes out, it's already one of my favorites just because it's Beartooth. And I, I, they're one of my... If, if, if we ever do a video in the future where I talk about like my top 10 favorite bands of all time, Beartooth is in my top 10. Where at, I don't know because it fluctuates depending on when mm-hmm. I'm jamming. Um but Beartooth is in my top 10 and they just, they knocked it out of the park. The passage is great, but like the heavier song, like I think the best heavier song is hell of it because hell of it's just got that. Like it's got the fast shit. It's got the bouncy mm-hmm. shit. It's just fun. It's fun. Well, all while at the same time, Caleb Shoma bleeding his fucking yeah. heart out. Um, just being open with his yeah. mental health and shit. And that uh, is, that is a boy who's written a lot of, songs i can relate to yeah same absolutely yeah um in the good the bad and in the indifferent absolutely across all of their records it's been incredible uh and it's just it's really good i don't have too much to wax poetic about it's just really good what is your number seven kid my number seven my number seven is spirit box Ooh, what do you got to say about spirit box not a whole lot that you haven't already right. um the song that I put on here was Hurt You. That's Hurt my, you that's one of my favorites. So good. Didn't you put that on a playlist? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. I, I don't, don't remember. I don't I may remember. have like put it on one for Hazel, but I don't know if it stayed there. I don't remember. I don't know. There's a lot on that record that it's, can work for your, mm-hmm. for that character. But anyway, yeah. yeah. Secret Garden is on Hazel's though. Oh, Secret, Secret Garden. Garden's good. Um Secret Garden's really good. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's fucking great, man. Yes. It's I don't I'm not here for the I'm not here for the bashing. It's, it's I'm not so here good. for that. It it's, earned that's why I said like an award I just an actual award I wanted to give was yeah. like a, a well earned yeah. like breakthrough artist was Spirit Box because hey, uh spoiler alert people who want to say they haven't paid their due, they fucking have. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I remember being a fan of I wrestled the bear once 
And, you know, I remember, of course, when there's a new vocalist, there's always that getting like used to Mm -hmm. phase. But once I was used to Courtney and Iwabo, she was fantastic. She was awesome. And I loved her in Iwabo. And I was wondering why she was sounding familiar. And when I was like looking up Spirit Box, I'm all, oh, okay. So she was one of the vocalists for I Wrestled a Bear once. I'm like, I knew she was familiar. Uh, and they just, they just put out a banger of a record, Hell and yeah. it's a little of everything. It's got yeah. some like vibey hard rock jams. It's got those heavy gent breakdowns. Uh, Courtney LaPlant uh, sings like an angel and screams like a demon, and it's mm-hmm. amazing. And I yeah. love it all. Yeah, it's so good. And I love just the Spirit Box Twitter account just replying with fucking mm-hmm. fucking weed cloud emoji to everyone who posts pictures of the holy roller rolling tray yeah just, uh-huh um it just so they just flash through my page every so often i'm They're just like so oh, yeah. i love it um but yeah that's i don't have much else to say about it except it's fucking fantastic this is so another good. one where i'm just like it goes here because it's good and i like it because it's good and i like it's it it's good and i like it you want to know what else is good and things that i like awards S- awards <laughs> singles I- i'm going to do one award I have, I have one award. I have a shit post award. Uh-huh. Um, and then I want to talk singles. We'll yeah. talk our singles. Yeah. Uh, singles are like, an, we have like- Hot eight, singles. Hot, there are hot metalcore singles in your area. Um, uh, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> My shit post award. And it is the song from this record that is on here. Um, unexpectedly serious song from shit post band mm. goes to anxiety from Attila. Oh, good. I was hoping you would say Attila because Attila and I, I, I say shit post <laughs> of the band because Attila and Franz specifically mm-hmm. do not take themselves seriously. Franz has a mm-hmm. vibrato. The band has a vibrato. Franz has an OnlyFans. Franz and his now fiance oh. both have OnlyFans. Where oh, they good for them? Yeah, good for them. And they, yeah, they're they're killing it and hustling and having a fun time. And following Franz on Twitter is so so <laughs> great. I recently started, and I'm just like, this is this his was a mistake. Twitter is in the best way possible. It <laughs> yeah. was a mistake, and I love. Everything because i either get it from franz Mm -hmm. or justin wang from Mm -hmm. jinx and of the youtube channel wang uh also retweets some Mm -hmm. or replies to tweets from franz and it's just wonderful um but anxiety is a very serious song Mm -hmm. Uh, from a band that just loves to party and have fun and has on the same record metalcore manson and day drinking yeah which uh also metalcore manson is my guilty pleasure of the year but even though i say guilty pleasure because i don't believe in the phrase guilty pleasure same but if there's anything that would ever fit Mm -hmm. that category it is metalcore Metalcore manson Manson from attila and throwing down to that song when seeing them live was mm -hmm. amazing um but yeah th- on the same record as um has day drinking mm-hmm. and metalcore manson is a serious song about the mental health crisis and the the fucking like pill epidemic mm-hmm. of being hopped up on fucking antidepressants and feeling 10 times more depressed and actually making a statement like it, it goes to my unexpectedly serious song from yeah. a band that okay. the, from shit post band is what I yeah. said. But also you can replace shit post band with a band that's not meant to be taken seriously. Band, well, I know what you mean. Fun I, band. Yeah. A band you should, t- a band that you usually turn to a band that you should, that you don't expect like think too hard about. Right. A don't. band you can turn your brain off to. Well, even that sounds like an insult. It's not an, none of this know, is an insult. I think that, it's understood what we what we mean. We it. people uh, who like Attila band, know what we mean. Yeah, exactly. Band Attila. <laughs> band Attila. <laughs> Song anxiety. <laughs> Mood serious. Mm-hmm. Unexpected. Mm-hmm. But good. Mm-hmm. What is your award before we get into singles? My award goes to um, most breakdowns. I have an award for most breakdowns, and it's also one of my singles of the year. Is it the Dexcore award? It's Dexcore. Yeah. Earthworm, it's Earthworm by Dexcore. Which is on my favorite singles. Mm-hmm. Um, Dexcore, when you showed me that song, I think the thing that I said when we were jamming it, I was like, this is like the sixth breakdown, like not in a complaining yeah. sense. It was just, this is the sixth breakdown. I also breakdown. remember when I showed it to you, you went... 
why have you been keeping this for me? And I remember standing there like, it's one I've been trying to show you for weeks and we just haven't gotten, gotten to, to the it. list I that know. I had. And I was just like, I've been dying because I know you would love this. Oh, they're so good. Dex Core was a, such a blessing mm-hmm. to drop into my lap and have. Um, and they put out a lot of good singles transition mm-hmm. into our favorite singles of the year. Oh boy, I have a lot. There, so do I. I'm just gonna start rattling off some before I get to like my what I consider my top five. Um, so one, two, three, four, five. Making sure I've said, uh, Memphis May Fires Blood and Water. That was my favorite single of theirs from the year. Uh, Skinned only put out one song this year. Everyone was waiting for Skinned to put out Chapter Three. Um, but they did put out Michelle Carter, which was mm-hmm. a fantastic song. Uh, for those who don't know Skin, uh, they call them True Crime Industrial, which they're a group that uh, their lyrics and stuff are about true crime cases and about like the horrors of reality that is these cases. And also, I will say, is a band that you look on paper and maybe think, is this going to be like yikes territory or handled well territory? And it's very much the latter. They do not glorify what has happened or the people that are the perpetrators of this shit and more definitely bring attention to uh, the victims and the people victimized by things and do not like glorify it, but also don't sugarcoat the reality of things. Uh, And they only put out one song this year. I was sad we didn't get chapter three yet, but their social medias are also starting to ramp up again. And I'm all, fuck, we need, I, I need another one. But mm-hmm. Michelle Carter was a great song. Um, you had, uh, Crown the Empire had two bangers. They had Dance of the Dead. And then the one I have on here, which is in Another Life with the Courtney and the Plant. Mm-hmm. Uh, Motionless and White had Time Bomb. Um, another hot take of the year. I loved Out for Blood from Code Orange. It is an unironic banger. Mm-hmm. Yes, I know they're, it's a new metal song and not a hardcore song, but it is really fucking good. Um, you have We Got the Moves from Eskimo Callboy, mm-hmm. which also I'm going to say on a, my award for funniest video of the year is also We Got mm-hmm. the Moves. Any video that they've put out this yeah. year. Um, so good. I also have, you know, Earthworm. I have Owen Caskets from Jinx. Uh, vanilla Paste from Tala, mm-hmm. uh, Daggers from We Came as Romans, uh, Fear of Dying from Poppy, mm-hmm. uh, the new single from Palisades, Vengeance from August Burns Red, Start the Healing from Corn, the cover of Montero from Varsity, Lost from Being as an Ocean, Shoulders from Coheed and Cambria, uh, Antagonist from Nova Twins, uh, Wonderland from Word Alive, but my favorites, my favorite singles mm-hmm. from Five to One, mm-hmm. Five Chapel Town Rag from Slipknot. Four, Sacrifice from Devil Wears Prada. Three, The Death of Peace of Mind from Bad Omens. Two, Hallelujah from Under Oath. And number one, Future Emo is here to stay, baby. My favorite single of the year was Die Free from Bring Me the Horizon. Hell yeah. Uh, um, I, I love Bring Me the Horizon. They're one I'm, of my favorites. And I love that song so I'm much. I'm so glad that you have a structured list. There was no reason for you to have to have a structured <laughs> list. It's just how my brain functions. No, it's okay. Um... But those were just singles, right? Those were just singles, yes. All my EPs and singles are mixed together. That's fair. Do we also want to talk EPs as well? I'm going to have here? to because Let's talk I talk EPs can't... as well. While I'm um, at it, okay. go ahead go ahead and talk about your EPs and singles and then I'll talk okay, about my favorite EPs. Because please mine do. are going to be all mixed together. Yes, please do. Please talk about Because I these. also sometimes can't remember good what was just a single and what was... To be <laughs> fair, there are some that I have that are EPs that should have been singles. Some that are singles that were EPs, yeah. like Memphis May Fire, right? So it, it's good to kind of combine these two as well. Sorry, now that I've kind of had it's, a big yawn, it's okay. Um, I'm just gonna go down this list. It's in no order at all. I don't have like a top five. Let's go. I, all these I know are EPs is and singles that you loved. All I know is my number one, and I'm just gonna save it for last. Yes, that's it. Because mm-hmm. um, it's also my number one for uh, EP. Oh, for EP, yeah, but my Sing- single, your as single, well. my yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so just throwing them out there. Blood and Honey by Cane Hill. Oh my God. Those, those crew EPs were so fucking good. Mm-hmm. They're amazing. Um, 
Die For You by Bring Me. So good. I know that a whole ass album came out and it was good too from Destroy Boys. Mm-hmm. But I also just, I put the song Drink on here. Drink was a good song. Um, good song, yeah. Chapel Rag Town Rag. Chapel Town Slipknot. Rag. We got to see that live. We did. It was Not amazing. Fest. It was so good. Um, Black Hole. We came with Romans. Caleb Shomo. Yeah. Fantastic. <sighs> it was hard to choose which of those three. Mm-hmm. I put Daggers on there because that was the one more recent in my brain. But all three singles they dropped yeah. this year were so good. Earthworm. Earthworm. Most, Hell yeah. Most breakdowns. Most breakdowns. Uh, yep. Dexcore uh, Mikito. Mm-hmm. Um, Fear of Dying was my favorite of Poppy's songs. So good. That and the um, fucking EP that she did for whatever that wrestling EP that she did. Mm-hmm. That was like the basically yeah. we're back to fucking 2000s like yeah. metal bands coming out with wrestlers and it's so good. Yeah. yeah. Um, Bloody Knuckles by Sleeping with Sirens. Right. Fantastic. Yeah. So fantastic good. come at me um so i love sleeping with sirens fight me and you got to show me what i missed with being shamed out of listening mm. to sleeping with sirens yeah um until i wake nightmares is Ooh, the song is what i right yeah. uh-huh yeah um, that was good hallelujah by under oath fantastic i want people to know i there's some records just for the quantifier people are gonna ask well, what about the song with ghost main what about nom what about pneumonia I listened to Ammonia once. Fantastic. Like, there's nothing against the other singles. I listened to um, um, Damn Excuses and then Hallelujah on fucking repeat. And then I listened to Ammonia once and I went, I'm cutting myself off of listening to the other singles because I'm so excited for this record. I want to be as surprised as possible. Mm -hmm. And I've heard the other songs fucking bangers and are incredible and i'm so excited to listen yeah. to them when the record comes out next week it comes out next week uh, and i'm so excited yeah and but i i sometimes with releases especially because i know they've released five singles and it's a 10 track record i'm like it's a shorter in terms of amount of songs i'm cutting myself off at three singles because i've had records that i have spoiled not that they were bad they were fantastic like Prime example, Sun Sky from Crown the Empire. Mm-hmm. Amazing record. I listened to all four of the nine actual songs because it's a 10 track song, including an intro, but four of the nine songs. So four of the songs I already knew. So mm-hmm. I, that's just a personal thing for me that I, I cut it off and I go, I, I'm too excited. I'm cutting it off here. Yeah. Um, which is why Hallelujah was my favorite. Yeah. You don't need you don't need to be sold on the album. No, You're, I'm already, already sold. You already I'm already know excited. You want it. I already have yeah. it pre-ordered. Uh, and in fact, it ships it arrives vinyl, by Friday. Yeah. The vinyl. Yeah. Hell yeah. It arrives uh, by Friday. So I'm really excited. Um, Next Friday, that is. Not this Friday. Yeah. Next Friday, yeah. Um, I threw it on here under my EPs because... Uh, um, but The Used released the back half of Heartwork. Right. The the ones that didn't make it onto the, yeah. uh, the record. Yeah, Basically yeah. the B-sides, but an entire fucking disc worth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, was, it was great. I loved it. It was good. Yeah. yeah. I remember we jammed it. It was fun. Um, it was good. Let's get this party started. Tom Morello with Bring Me the Horizon. Yes. Fantastic. Oh my it's so God. good. It's the one song I heard off his record, but I loved it's it. So, and so I didn't good. realize, I, I I heard parts of the first, of, it was a double album. Mm-hmm. And I only listened to like a couple songs off the first oh r- of the two records. I'm yeah. like, oh my God. And it, the feature stacks yeah. too. Yeah. Um, Billy Talent featuring Rivers Cuomo. Right. End of me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh-huh. I'm so excited for more Billy Talent. That's I love Billy good. Talent. That's so good. Yeah. I'm so I'm excited for that. And you kind of recently had me catch up on Billy Talent. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, I missed out. And that single was good. That was a good yeah. one. Um, Time Bomb, Emotionless. <sighs> so good. So, so good. good. Um, out for Blood by Code Orange. Mm-hmm. Waiting by Pup. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm <laughs> so excited for mm-hmm. more Pup. I'm mm-hmm. so excited. I just... ADHD brained all the way to remembering a like kind of honorable mention shout out that I uh-huh. forgot. Yeah. Is unrelated like yeah. unrelated. Mm-hmm. Um but if I don't say it now, I'm never gonna remember to say it. Mm-hmm. And it's just to shout out the fact that um Cancer Bats put out like right. like yeah. a co- not just acoustic, but like folk instrument sessions of their own songs and then they like rename the songs to match and you were telling them it's so good that's all it's so good Um, yeah yeah. (laughs) taladin yes listen varsity varsity's cover of montero from lil nas x second best cover second best cover of the year but tala covering friend like me friend like me from aladdin it's my so all-time bad. favorite Disney movie. It's unironically good. And it's actually good. 
amazing. It just is good. It is amazing. And Please listen to Tala. Please listen to Tala. I like them. Please listen to Tala. Please listen to Tala. I like them. That's it. Just please listen to Tala. I like them. They're so good. Tala Goper. <laughs> Start- Tala go friend like me, and I liked it. It tickled my brain happy. <laughs> Start the healing by corn. Mm-hmm. It was um, good. I'm excited for that. Yeah. The new record. Blood too. Command had some. So I love Blood Command. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, knocked Loose. <sighs> I know you have more to say about. I have a tiny bit. You have to a t- say. you have a little. You have an itty bitty tiny bit itty more bitties, to say. And I may have about an, knocked uh, loose. I have a, a discussion of the EP as a like whole. I, I know then, I've I've got EPs mixed in here. Yeah, no, but, yeah, yeah um, no, no, no. I say there's there's a lot I'm gonna say. There's a lot I'm gonna say. So I'm like, like Moss of Flames. Oh my had an god. EP. I put, like porcelain so I put good. the preservation of hate on my list. Same, the, same, yeah, same. Good. So did I. Yeah, so good. So good. It was hard to choose a it song was. to it represent was. that EP because it's just. Banger after banger mm-hmm, after banger. Mm-hmm. It was so good. Shout out to Thank You Scientist. You like jazz? I do you like sometimes. Jazz? I'm just not and allowed to say you. so because then jazz musicians will beat me up and take my shoes. What's the quote that's on? Because <laughs> they don't have any and they need shoes. Anyway, what is their, what is that? Yeah, jazz musicians are homeless. Anyway, what is that? I'm, that's dude. mean to homeless people. I know. Homeless um, people don't deserve to be that. slandered I know, like I that. I know. I know jazz musicians. Maybe. I know. Yeah. And it's, people anyway, know it's in jazz. We're shit posts. Anyway. Um... No, the the tweet that they had like basically fucking yeah. framed on their website as their bragging rights was someone that said like thank you scientist sounds like a sixth grade band that doesn't know how to play their instruments or something like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, uh-huh. Um, right. That was a funny P. That was fun. That was great. I put Soul Diver was the song that I specifically that was good. put on here. So so that was good. good. That was I fun. listen, I like them. Um good. Sacrifice is what I chose from the Devil Wears Prada. Prada. I, I, I'm going to wax poetic mm-hmm. about Z2 in a moment. Um, um, in Another Life featuring Courtney the Plant, Crime <sighs> the Empire. So, so good. Um, this is where I get to be be me for a second. Please. I get to be me for a second. Please. Um, Dreams of You. Mm-hmm. Birthday Massacre put out a single this year. I was going to say, you goth ended up to that's a real piece of shit. Please. Please gush. I'm going to keep going because Please um, gush. Aesthetic Perfection put out a lot. Like a lot. I love you like a lot. A lot. A lot. I mean, so did, remember in my honorable mentions, I was already shouting them out. Top right. of the video was Ludovico Technique as well. Mm-hmm. Um, between the two of them, I got my fucking like mm-hmm. aggro pop out of the way you know what i mean yeah like no that you got my your aggro shit i got out of the way. my yeah. got my agro tech and my like industrial death pop out of the right way. It just yeah makes me happy i was gonna say um, death pop yeah, yeah, yeah but i put a new drug is one that i put on here but oh, i mean aesthetic yeah. perfection had so many you're like it was hard to choose so, just one. so many and in various styles mm. and with other people right just, it was just a little of um, everything yeah combi christ put out compliance combi christ had a new single this year i didn't yeah. know that i told you like very, it was very recent too but i was just like can we jam and it, we never got around we never to, got it. Got around to it fuck uh, award for single i missed out this year was combi christ. christ compliance um and then a song that's not new to this year Mm. Um, but I have a special place in my heart with this song, mm-hmm. a complicated place originally, but a reclaimed place mm-hmm. in the end. So you say reclaimed um, song of the year, reclaimed song of the year. Um, I have an interesting history with Juke Joint Jezebel by KMFDM. Right. And they put out the remastered the, like, version the, of it. Like, yeah. Remaster of their like old tape or whatever it was. You were reading me the story about mm-hmm. it and then you played it for me. Right. Mm-hmm. And you want to talk about a song I heard in 2005, 2006, right. like a few times on like, um, I'm sure I downloaded it or my best friend downloaded it off mm-hmm. of LimeWires. Like I know the one <laughs> The one KMFDM song. The KMFDM yeah. song, yeah. Um, and if you're like, what a weird song to have a history with, it's literally the answer is just it's... It's complicated. Well, it's... Personal it's, history. It's the first song that was playing at Baby's first goth night. Yeah. It's just that that night is the complicated part. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. reclaiming it was the even more important part because I own my history with goth club again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, absolutely. So shout out to the 2021 
version of Juju right. and Jezebel. Yeah. Um, topping it off with my single of the year being The Death of Peace of Mind by Bad Omens. <sighs> it was... <sighs> if that song had come out like a month or mm-hmm. two earlier, mm-hmm. uh, it would have been fighting with Bring Me. Mm-hmm. And I know, I know it would have, and I yeah. know it would have. And I also have loved the scenes reaction to the song has been strangely generally positive. I right. I wanted to just watch the music video and I typed it into YouTube and there's so many reaction videos yeah. to this song. Like that, so many. Like you'll see the ones that are just like, I love the new direction and mm-hmm. like, what's going on? Yeah. And, oh, this is good. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it yeah. was. It Speaking was a big of being deal. a goth kid, have you seen uh, Noah from Bad Omens? Anyway, um, the one black glove, <laughs> the all black trench coat, the short hair now, which some people are like. Well, it's a crime because he's known for the long hair. But listen, listen, you guys have Ronnie Radke. Listen, <laughs> um, you guys have. <laughs> you guys have. You. Can, <laughs> what's your EP of the year? <laughs> There's My no EP transition. of the year is. Uh, Action adventure. Action adventure is also my EP of the year, um, and they have single-handedly not that pop punk needed any more resurrecting than it already was getting from mm-hmm. incredible bands like Story So Far and Wonder Years and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But like having Action Adventure, having those boys just put out the, the, a banger, the best EP of the year and mm-hmm. the best pop. Punk this is release. the one that when I say a TikTok band is actually a band that people that went viral on tiktok yeah it went viral on tiktok because they have a one minute song that's that, the opening yeah. yeah and it's it's so good incredibly good the whole record is so fun i remember you want to talk about like we listening us listening to uh something on repeat mm-hmm. uh that came out and literally that whole month after right it came out right at the beginning of summer and i literally went pop punk summer and mm-hmm. the whole summer on and off was on rotation uh, you bought I, me the record, I did. I the, bought vinyl, the vinyl, which the vinyl is so pretty. Yeah. And it made me happy to see so many of the copies. And I know it's limited runs of like a hundred copies here, 50 copies here, a hundred here, yeah. but all of the runs get sold out. Yeah. Made me happy. It was mm-hmm. just, it was so good. That, mm. that EP came out and then I moved out here Yeah, and that move, like I, like I was jamming that EP over. It's like 20 something minutes long. And I'm just jamming it over and over on my flights over, just like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, no, it was so good. Yeah. And it was like perfect, t- perfectly timed for you. Uh, some of my favorite EPs of the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Donnie Jepp EP we talked mm-hmm. about. I mentioned the Poppy EP. Lonely Avenue had an EP this year. Yeah. That was a fun fucking EP. It was fun. Um, listen, Crabcore came back, baby, with Long Time No See from Attack Attack. And I loved that EP. That was a fun EP. Uh, I loved the circus survive ep it, mm-hmm. it's a different ep it's a little more on the mellow side i listened to it again this morning just you know but it's so and good I was like, mm-hmm. it was such it, it's an ep at nearly 30 minutes yeah. you know what i mean so yeah. it might as well just be like a release but no it, it was it was an ep and it was fantastic uh the amity affliction had mm. singles that mm-hmm. were released as an ep technically right um like Monster Flames, we talked about that. Kane fucking Hill oh. talked about that. Um, so my top three EPs, number one was um, Action, Adventure. Action Adventure. Number two, um, A Tear in the Fabric of Life from mm-hmm. Knocked Loose, which also is my award for best music video. Yes, They mine dropped as well. that whole EP as a music video, as mm-hmm. a whole, completely stop motion if I read correctly, one guy spent like seven or eight months animating that whole thing, which it sounds like that was his pandemic project mm-hmm. was working on that. Um, wonderfully done, wonderfully put together. And then my third and, and song I have off of that one is when light divides the holler, um, which for people who do not know, uh, the beach boy sample has been removed from digital services, but it I have from Spotify from people who are seeing on Reddit, Spotify, Apple, all streaming services oh, okay. have lost the sample. The sample's yeah. not on there anymore. 
but my vinyl came in a week ago. Yeah, the still samples still are still on there. At least as of right now, there is a possibility. Don't like quote me on it. I don't want people to find this video and be like, oh, I can get the, the vinyl and then they get it and it's not on the vinyl. There is a possibility yeah. I could have a it's, special release of it. It's possible that like pre-order pressing could differ from future pressings. From like current pressings or like second or third I runs don't know. of or it. it Who knows? It could literally just be that it can it can't be on streaming services. Could also be that. We don't know. There's I don't no, know. Nothing I'm yet. not a doctor. No, I'm not a doctor. Uh, and then number three is Z2 and mm -hmm. also gets my award for biggest surprise. Surprise. Um, the zombie EP, there is a Reddit thread on r slash metalcore that talked about what are the best metalcore EPs of all mm -hmm. time. And there was a massive majority saying the zombie EP from Prada was easily the, is easily the best one. And I agree. It is the best metalcore EP of all time. Um, but I will also say Z2 is also one of the best metalcore EPs of all time uh, because number one, it was a surprise. It came out of nowhere. Nobody was expecting it to come out, but we all should have expected it given the last two years of pandemic uh, that, of course, The Devil Wears Prada is going to do another zombie EP um, that not only married their older metalcore style with the way that they've kind of grown and matured and they're like, melodic like melodic writing and stuff as well it's just grimy and dirty at times forlorn is the best song that prada put out this year forlorn's mm. got that deep detuned fucking heavy groove yeah. and it's so good it's so yeah. fucking good you and i went different directions on our Prada EPs. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But like the thing is, is everything Prada put out this year was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, if Sacrifice is a, a hint as to what their, uh, their next record is going to sound like, yeah. please inject that shit into my veins. Mm -hmm. it, it's uh, I'm excited. I'm super excited. Hey everyone. It's a uh, future Greg and Kit here. Kit say something real quick. Uh. So uh, the two of us have some things that we need to uh, make additions to uh, that we didn't get to talk about in the original recording. So uh, we both uh, wanted to talk about in EPs the uh, Titus Titus record. What is it that you say? I say Titus. I say Titus because Final Fantasy X. But uh, he put out a banger of an EP. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I, I would absolutely go recommend it if you like that. Uh, those artists that mash up some uh, some trap beats and some pop punk. It's a lot of fun and it's a fun little EP. An unexpected EP, but a good one. And re we really liked it and forgot to talk about it. You forgot a single. You forgot Placebo. A couple singles from Placebo, correct? Yeah. So uh, go check them out. They're gonna One of them is on your playlist. That'll be in the description down below. Uh, and I have to be shamed for not mentioning one of my favorite EPs of the year. It was in my top 10 EPs and I just forgot to put it on my playlist, but it was written down on my original list. And that was the new Lorna short EP that came out. I have to the hellfire on my list, uh, on my playlist in the description down below. And it, um, yeah, I, I, I should be shamed. Uh, Will Ramos should not be allowed to make those inhuman, disgusting noises. And they're fantastic. And uh, go check out that EP. It was a lot of fun. Literal farm animal. So I'm all done with my awards, but you do have one more award. That I you do. Want to do. I do have one more award. I wanted... And it's a wonderful award. It's a good yeah, award. It's a serious it's award. Just, yeah. It's just celebrating some of the best women of the year, honestly. I'm yeah. Gonna, I originally had three because i was going to give it to women in the scene the trademark yeah and i think i'm going to expand it to a, a total of four yeah hell yeah absolutely yeah. um so i'm gonna i'm gonna give this award to i mean i already said women in the scene right? yes yeah um we've we've talked about courtney the plant she she gets some love she's so good she gets some love because listen she's She's great. She's she's great. I don't know what you want from she's me. She's wonderful. Great. She overcome horrible anxiety recording Eternal Blue, uh, and everyone being so proud of her for seeming more confident on stage as time's gone on. Right? Yeah. Um. She's wonderful. I again definitely well deserved. Mm -hmm. um, so the second woman that I was going to give an award for, um, I'm going to give to um to Connie Scarboza, <sighs> of the sass. Queen. The Sass Queen Award. Sass Queen of the of every year. Let's yeah. be real. She's the Sass Queen of the year. And in a in a scene, something that has made me happy is a queer as fuck band with a trans female vocalist. Mm -hmm. 
getting so much recognition from so many people of going, yeah, but this record was amazing and they did so fucking good, right? Mm -hmm. Like they really just had so much coverage this year and Connie fucking deserves it. Connie Scarbosa fucking, she fucking deserves Mm -hmm. it. So good. So good. Mm -hmm. So good. Mm Mm-hmm. Who's the third one? The third one that I wanted to give it to is um, not a vocalist this time. Okay. I wanted to give it to um, Diamond from Tetrarch yes. for being a fantastic guitarist yeah. and just fantastic woman in the scene. She's that, just her talking about like representation in the scene and her being happy of seeing like you know, women of color mm-hmm. walk up to her and be like, you're like tell- showing me I can be up there too. Yeah. To white fucking cis white dudes like me are all, yes, please. We yeah. need more representation. Let's fucking go. Yeah. Please. This music's for everyone. It yeah. doesn't matter who you are. This music's for everyone. We she all gets, go through shit and she's so good. She gets the new metal queen award. She is the new metal queen award. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, The fourth one I wanted to add on and I apologies in advance because no one has ever, I have not, I've not personally heard anyone say her name out loud to me before. Mm-hmm. Um, so apologies in advance if I get this wrong, but I believe her name is Reed. Mm-hmm. I'm going to check with you on that. You would pronounce it that way too, correct? Yes. I would say yeah. Reed. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to take a stab at this here and say uh, Reed Walcott from We Are The Union. Fantastic. Um, she also deserves Scott Queen Award. Yes. Um. So those are those are four fucking. We got the queens. core. We got the 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 the, the core queen yeah. with Courtney. The yeah. sass queen of Connie. The mm-hmm. new metal queen of Diamond, mm-hmm. and the ska queen mm-hmm. of Reed. And yeah. You love to see it. You yeah. love to hear it. Um. I didn't talk much about We Are the Union when mm-hmm. when. You know, just reading off, right? You know, top uh-huh. albums. I didn't get to say much about it, um, but please, gosh, for a moment, please, please, please. <laughs> this video is gonna be like five hours. Listen, it's all good. Listen, hey, fucks. <laughs> I'm trans. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fucks. You're like, I'm a. You're like I'm trans. You're a trans boy. Listen, yeah, and listen, and. That's the tweet. Listen, I'm, reply to tweet. Uh huh. Scott said trans rights this year. It did. It really did. S- and if you're and Scott continued to say Black Lives Matter this year. It did. It really did. Mm-hmm. Yes, correct. And we are the union is great. Listen, they really are. And that album, that album hit in a way that hasn't hit since. Um, against me's transgender dysphoria. Blues. I was just about to say you you um, had equated it to against me's transgender dysphoria blues. Yeah, yeah. I am not a trans woman, but I am trans. Yes, I still relate to a level yeah. here. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're not. Um, yeah, you're 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 a, you're a you you are you are a boy. B O I. Yeah, I you're am, a boy. I, I am technically just for the awareness of yes. It, it, he they demi boy um yes but there you go. It, yeah so people know it, the actual yeah. he they demi boys what you, it, who you are yeah yeah and hopefully next year hopefully in future years i'll be able to give some awards to some fucking some boys some fucking give me the fucking he they emo twink scene boys let's go lead in the way you need to also lead the way anyway i'm hot wheels i'm leading the way can we cut out this whole video? <laughs> oh, I hope. What's I'm, your number six? <laughs> your number six. What's your shit post award? Oh, my shit post award. I would like to give the Kids Choice Award <laughs> for you know what? Never mind. <laughs> so before we get on to our last six, which yeah. we've been going on for way too long, we have. We're gonna we're, we're gonna have. speed through our other six top albums. Uh, I have well. <laughs> Speed through is a relative term. This is gonna be a three hour video. It's okay. Yeah. Um, but my uh recognition award. We've had a lot of features this year. Mm-hmm. We had a lot of Kellen Quinn features this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a lot of Travis Barker, the drummer. Some would say from... some of those features came out last the year before. Some but... would say, yeah, some would say that uh, we totally didn't have to cut out an award because Shut of... up! 
because the song came out Shut in 2020. <laughs> um, there was Travis Barker features. Um, but there was only one record this year that I want to give uh, the, the Tiger Blood Award for best Charlie Sheen feature. And that is Aim High's local band Forever. They are, in fact, the album with the best Charlie Sheen feature of the year. They were the only album. We don't know that. That's true. We don't know. That is true. (laughs) That is so fucking true. What has Charlie Sheen's cameo been like this past year? Was he just doing album features? Maybe he was. I don't know. But one of his album features was on the Aim High record, (laughs) which made me so happy. And Aim High's local band forever. Mm Mm-hmm is the best collab record of all time. Because they went, we're a band, a small band. Mm -hmm. We're going to put out a record that's all features. All features. (laughs) All of its features. All bangers. All features. Local band forever. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of, I like, it also is probably the record with the highest cameo budget. Let's be real. They got a bunch of cameos. The cameo budget You don't know they might be their friend. That's true. They could actually be friends. They, they could, could be friends. Aim high. I know you're watching this video. I totally know you're watching this video and still to this point. And right we're, now, we're your friends too. We are your friends. Absolutely. Hey, feature us, please. No, but please, please let us know either A, if you're friends with all these people like from Cameo or B, if the Cameo budget was higher than the amount of record time, <laughs> like record, but like recording the record budget. Anyway. Mm. This has been going on for way too long. It has. I'm getting the sillies. Same. So we are done with the awards. We're done with singles. We're done with EPs. Mm -hmm. We've got six more records to go through. Yeah. Let's start with number six. Yeah. I'm going to start with you, actually. Wow, me? What is your number six? My number six is Bodies by AFI. Ooh. Um, Yeah. I I have a long history with AFI. You do. When I talk about an era of time in which I missed out on music. AFI was one of the bands I didn't. AFI is yeah. I've I've been with and stuck with because right. I love me some hardcore punk and I am a goth kid and I am a post punk kid and I am a new wave kid and I am a whatever December Underground was kid. Screamo kid. Um, <laughs> You're a screamo kid, yeah. yeah. I I love AFI and I love everything they've made. And we also share similar like influences. Right. Which I hear come through in everything they make. Right. You know what I mean? Like everything you've helped me catch up on. Yeah. Yeah. To the point that people can sit here and jump from like early records to, you know, bodies or even, you know, burials or the blood album and be like, the fuck is this meanwhile you know if you're listening to like you know december underground or yeah. you know so you know like some of their other you still hear it you still hear it you you still are just like yeah these are just these are just like new wave kids what are you on about yeah like, yeah um bodies was so fucking good bodies was i said this in goth music circles as the joke of the year but it's still true that bodies was my favorite goth album of the year i mean it was it's it a was. goth album listen um, yeah it's like i know it's not but i know it is right um i loved it i loved it um, i loved the night that we got drunk on wine and listened to it on the record player that was such a fun night mm-hmm. it was a night we jammed that is that. the of your vinyl collection that spans However much it spans, I own one in this house, and it is AFI's Bodies. Um, well, you own three. The other two are Panic at the Disco. Uh, oh, you're right. I the first forgot and third I Panic bought. Rectors. Yeah, you bought those at a Barnes and Noble. <laughs> but yeah, AFI's Bodies is the other one you got during a record store day. Mm-hmm. Not even as a record store day release. It was no, we just... were looking at other things, and I went, "Hey, I found this record store in middle of fucking nowhere that has a copy of Bodies." Mm-hmm. And you're like. Yes, please. Let's do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah. Far Too Near is the song that I have on here that I... I put... um, um, I put, because it was in my top 20, I put uh, Twisted Tongues on Mm -hmm. mine. Mm -hmm. Uh, You want to talk about, like, well, where'd the the hardcore punk 
stuff go. Mm-hmm. Uh, Escape from Los Angeles is very much a, like a got that fucking punk vibe to it. It's still yeah. very much a goth that, like, song. Punk vibe, yeah. Yeah, like I'm just like they're all their influences are on this record. It's yeah. so good. Yeah. Um, I also want to give a, a last minute award to Davy Havoc for being. Uh, one of my favorite genders. No, um, for, <laughs> best gender for being gender goals in every fucking era of his career. Right. Of every time you've been like, I buff, wanted to be this buff goth punk with the long hair. I was just like, wish I could, if I ever could, you know, the like December underground era. I was just like, yep, that's awakened something in me. Sorry. <laughs> it's um, all good. Uh, to you know all the way up to what i lovingly call the goth mullet yeah he's got the goth mullet that you're unironically jealous of right give i wish i could age as gracefully i give the i give the darkened mullet award to davy havoc Mm -hmm. i was gonna say golden mullet but that doesn't match it's got to be a like a the, the the Raven Mullet Award mm. goes to Davey Havoc. The Raven Mullet Award goes to my Kinku Bard Thrace, but Yeah, no, yeah. that's fair. That's also very fair. <laughs> also very fair. So that was your number six. That was my number six. My number six is a record that the quantifier for this one is my history with this band. Mm-hmm. Is a band I've loved for a long time. I've seen them live a few times. Fun band to see live. They're a band that has been caught in a quandary of every time they've put out a record Mm -hmm. within the last 10 years, Mm -hmm. the audience's reaction is this is their best record. This is them at their best. They can't get any better. Then the next record will come out. They go, this is them at their best. They can't get any better. This is their magnum opus. Their record from... Now seven, technically, since we're in 2022. But when this came out in 2021, the record from five years prior, mm-hmm. everyone said this is their magnum opus. Mm-hmm. Nothing, nothing's ever going to top this record. And admittedly, it, it, it was incredibly good, right? And I really did not think that it was going to be, that their record that came out in 2021 was going to be As good as it was. But my number six is Every Time I Die's Radical. That new Every Time I Die joint. Let's bump it. it. (laughs) Uh, The fucking 2003 ass Ebola Rama video Mm -hmm. is so fucking good. Um, But Radical is... It was special listening to this record together. Because there was a point in the record... When we were listening to it, I went, oh, my God, the, like, the gloves are... And Low Teens mm-hmm. is a masterpiece. Like, it is a masterpiece of a record. Easily one of the best records of 2016. Mm-hmm. Fantastic record. And a lot of people were like, how are they going to top, especially the emotional level that Keith Buckley was at for Low Teens, nearly losing his now ex-wife and mm-hmm. his daughter before his daughter was even born. Um and a lot of just that pain and what he was going through. Mm-hmm. A lot of people were just like, how are they going to top of that? It was a very raw mm-hmm. emotional record. It was my, that was technically my, I had heard like a couple songs, mm-hmm. but that was my first full album introduction that was Low Teens. Was Low Teens, which yeah. is what a record to mm-hmm. jump in on is on Low Teens. Yeah. Um, and like, I knew it was going to be good, mm-hmm. but I was admittedly one of those people who were like, how are they going to top how are they going to top low teens? Mm-hmm. And then this record happened. Mm-hmm. And there was a moment that I was already in love with it. And it's the song on my list mm. that I looked at you and I went, this is them at their peak. Mm-hmm. And it was all this in war featuring Josh Scoggin from currently of 68, formerly of the chariot and the only Norma Jean record that exists. Um, I'll put that on record right. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's one of those things where um, I looked at you and went, holy fucking shit. A minute 17, the fucking bounce riff with the cowbell. Mm-hmm. I went, 
this is next fucking level for these guys. They have hit like th- this is literally me going, how can they top this, right? Mm-hmm. And not that the next record that they're going to put out after Radical is going to suck mm-hmm. or going to be not as good. It's mm-hmm. probably going to be just as good for different reasons. But this whole record, and I know you've got more to say about it I later. I have words. You have words to say about it later. Uh, but I have all this and more on here. Mm-hmm. But if I had to choose a single, it would be Post Boredom. Post Boredom mm-hmm. is a song. That is a fucking song. And I know you have words so specifically about that song, too. Um, but it's a fantastic record. Mm-hmm. Features that are on it are amazing. Um, Keith Buckley also gets one of my favorite features on the CU Space Cowboy record. Um, yeah. Keith Buckley said trans rights. Aaron Gillespie Hell said yeah. trans rights Hell for yeah. both being featured on that fucking record. It was amazing. But it is number six. It is a fun record. It is a cathartic record, especially, interestingly enough, being written before pandemic and right at the beginning of it, right? Like, there was a lot of, like, a lot of people were like, they must have wrote this in the middle of pandemic. And Keith Buckley's like, most of this record, most of this record was written in, like, late 2019, right? And it's like, yeah, but it, it just, it fucks. It's yeah. so good it's so yeah. good and like that, just reading a little bit of what he's had to say about songs like post boredom yeah about the like pre and during pandemic feelings and yeah. you know yeah. the like written before and then hitting different after, after you, thing, know, yeah. you know uh, anyway. and i know you'll get to it i know you'll get yeah. to it when you talk about um, it but i love it i love it so hell much yeah speaking of Speaking of features on albums, mm-hmm. um, next on my list, number five. Is that how that one, two, three, four, five? Yes. Number five. Number five on your list. Is CU Space Cowboy. Yes. Number five on my list is CU the Space Cowboy. Romance of Affliction. Clap, 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 break down. clap, um, break down. Yeah. It's, Sasscore's here, baby. Sasscore's here to stay. You gotta love to see it. It's this so record good. is so good. This record, when I talked about the fact that I do have history trademark with, you know, metalcore, yes, and, you know, things like that of yes. like the, or these early days, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's just that I was a sheltered little Christian boy, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and then I missed out on a giant era. Um, but you being a Christian boy. I think, are you going, are you going to talk about like under oath for a moment? Is that I was just going to talk about like that early era that I did get to experience. Oh yeah. Okay. So the, just that as just a whole. That, just that feeling and that vibe and the, you know, the early yeah. parts of the genre and the fact that it sounds like something out of like a 2006, like, you know what I mean? Like Even it's, down to the fucking long ass song titles, mm-hmm. which I love. I love that on the back of the vinyl that I got, which I, Pick that up as a part of, uh, you know, I got a bunch of, you know, gift cards and money for Christmas and bought like speakers for the record player and records and the romance of affliction is one of them. Yeah. I love how it looks like a fucking novel on the back for the track listing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, we're back, baby. This is Hell like, yeah. this is like 2006 Chiodos ass mm-hmm. shit, right? And it's so good. And the mm-hmm. vibe is so fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, it's so good it's very 2006 metalcore and it's mm. very familiar it's very comforting yes and at the same time like on a level i've never heard before yeah um i think on an so intensity that is very 2021 right it's nostalgic in the feeling but also it's heavy <laughs> nostalgic in the feeling and as brutal as they come for you know modern day it's, it's so good it is very good. And I mean, I, I think I know where you're getting at with the, when I just mentioning being a good Christian boy who couldn't listen to most things. Yeah. Um, having a certain feature. The Aaron Gillespie um, feature. Having the yeah. Aaron Gillespie feature. Being someone who grew up, you know, in a, something I'm no longer a part of, as it were. Yeah. Um, with records like they're only chasing safety. Mm-hmm. They're just like, hey, no, listen, this is at the Christian bookstore. I can yeah. listen to this, yeah. guys. Alongside with, you know, just a lot of different stuff. It was like, oh, yeah. it's here. Therefore, I can listen to it. And then yeah. along with myself in time, these bands that go actually kind of like, you know, fuck that shit. And yeah. Not, no. Yeah. You know, um, not cool anymore with me personally. No. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. It's good. It's, it's good. It's so good. It's good. And if you didn't know, it's genderqueer. And that makes me happy. Hell yeah. Dude, heart, dude. Metal, Metalcore said trans rights. Metalcore Listen. said trans rights this year. Scott Punk said trans rights this year. <laughs> you just dab on trans rights in the best way possible i'm yeah. dabbing for in the name of dabbing trans for trans rights yeah i dab in solidarity for trans rights Thank that's what you. i do all Thank of this you. is getting cut <laughs> i hope not <laughs> <laughs> so my number five yeah you talked about this earlier in your list but oh, my number I? five is this place will become your tune from mm. sleep token so we're getting into top five territory so my quantifier for my top five Way back before October, November happened, mm-hmm. this was my second record. This was my number mm-hmm. two. Um, this record, I, we talked about it earlier, I 100% understand the people that are disappointed with this record. I understand that. But I also, th- as we talked about before, it is a concept of humanity and love and loss. Uh, it is what I call an emotional concept record. It is a record that tells an emotional concept, not a story concept, mm-hmm. right? And as you said, the burning bright and then fading away of love and loss is very much the theme of this record. And even down to the, the title of it, this place will become your tomb. A love that burns so bright that it fades off into nothing. How many of us, all of us, have had those relationships with something that burned so bright early on, whether it was a romantic friendship or a family member being close to a family member or a dear friend that just, it burned bright and then just fell apart horribly. You know what I mean? And it's a wonderful concept. And it's, to get back to my quantifiers for my top five, my top five was a what is basically the records that I kept coming back to in different ways. I kept coming back to this record. This one on my number four. I came back to these records for various songs. And this record has different moods to come back to. The song that I have on here is The Love You Want. The Love You Want, I think, is the most dynamic and I think is the most important as to this is the concept of this record you're either gonna love it or hate it (laughs) and it's wonderful and it's fantastic and it ranks so high because and i was letting it fluctuate back and forth at some points it was down to like eight or nine and stuff like that but the thing is i kept coming back to it i kept revisiting it in various ways i kept revisiting hypnosis like that mind high water recently i've come back to like telemaras and high water um alkaline fall for me atlantic i had on repeat when the record came out and like there's so many good songs off of it and yes technically instrumentally there's a lull but it is important in the record and it warrants a front to back listen and i love it um and we'll get to why it ranked number five and not stayed at number two as I get to my top three, but mm-hmm. I'm putting a pin in that for the top three for my top three. But so number four, where are we at? What is our, what is your number four? My number four. I've talked about it a lot already, actually. Oh. Not really like content wise, but I've mentioned it a lot. I referred exci- to it a lot. I'm excited. My number four is Hushed and Grand by Mastodon. Oh, you prog kid. Yeah. I love this record. And it made me so happy how much you grabbed it and like, like I said, it ranks Give 24 <laughs> on my on my list, right? Yeah. It ranked 24 on mine, which, I mean, listen, I did not grow up a prog kid. I think the only prog I had was my dad is a massive Rush fan, right? Like, Hell that yeah. Is, which, I, I mean, love Rush. I, dude, Rush is fantastic, right? And still sad for Neil Peart, you know? Um, but it's just still one of... Still sad for my free free ticket that you never to got r40 to go. that was offered yeah. to me. i just had to physically be able to get there and I, boy oh boy i did not drive i yeah i never got to see them live unfortunately <laughs> my dad did once in like mid to late 2000s yeah um but it ranked high because it's a great record you know yeah so hushed and grim hushed and grim 
here's where I'm not going to have a lot of intelligent things to say about this album. Right. I'm not because it's, and it's not even just a matter of like, Oh no, it's just good. It's, it kind of, and I hate to be this guy. It kind of speaks for itself, but in a way that you have to let it speak for itself. Right. No, that, I I think that makes sense. I can't really speak for this album. I can't. It speaks for itself as to why it's as high on your list as it is. Yeah. It well that and like I can't I can't convey to someone what this album is without the without you listening to near two hours of it yourself. You know what I mean? Right. Um It's a lot of emotion. Yeah. There's a lot of emotion in it. There's also some fucking bangers that you can just put on and just fucking blast. It made me so Um, happy. That the last full length record, and I heard songs after Crack the Sky, but Crack the Sky was like the last full era of Mastodon. But it was, um, it made me so happy when we listened to it that I'm all, they're still putting out quality, crazy, fucking personal concept prog records. It made me so happy. Yeah. Um, this now, when I added it to my list, I had added it using the song Sickle and Peace, which <sighs> that's a good one. That is a good Just, one. It's hard to choose one. It is because, I mean, it opens with Pain with an Anchor, which mm-hmm. is yeah. fucking amazing. See, I I, um, I added, because it's one of the heavier ones, I added mm-hmm. Pushing the Tides on mine. Interesting. I do really like that song. Mm-hmm. But I was torn between adding Sickle and Peace or adding Tear Drinker. Tear Drinker is also another good one. Tear Drinker is... It's so good. <sighs> um, but no, I agree with you. Yeah, like it is... Also, the, it... The closer, Gigantium, is... It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. The whole it, record's fucking amazing. I agree with you that there's a lot to that record that it's an you... an hour and a half long. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you this right now. Um, why I, I value it and love it so much. It's not a record that feels an hour and a half long. It, nothing drags. Mm-mm. There's no concepts on it that linger too long. Like I complained about another thing mm. earlier. But, like, there's no, nothing feels, even the, like, eight and a half, nine minute tracks, yeah. there are full-fledged ideas that see itself through that are fun and interesting and work for where it's at in the record, too. And it's so good. Do you want to know what I've been in the habit of doing? What have you been in the habit of doing? Waking up about an hour and a half before I have to go to work. Mm-hmm. And that's your, that's and what you listen yes. to. Yes. Is Mastodon. And, yeah. and... It's weird because it, you know, if you're going to sit down and listen to it and focus on it and be like, I'm here to experience this album, right? you know, and focus in on, on that experience, there, you know, that comes with a vastly different set of emotions than if you go, this is my background noise while I'm doing something. Mm-hmm. Um, as background noise, which I didn't touch on the concept of sometimes things are background noise right like i didn't right, touch yeah. on that even though it was something i meant to kind of touch on with the armed right which was another record that you will have a very different experience if you're sitting down to focus in on that experience right. versus if it's background noise right. but it's one of my favorite background noise but it's also an amazing experience anyway yeah no yeah um just the this record as background noise kind of has like a perfect flow of like getting me like moving along that's cool while not awesome. just being non-stop like go 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 mm-hmm. it's just like okay this is fine all right i got this and okay i have time um i don't know it's good it's been really nice it's been nice it's been a nice way to spend my mornings that's cool you love to see it you yeah. love to see it and love to hear about it that's awesome um my number four is the edm record that's on my on my list um and we've talked about this person before on the channel. Um, it's a record that before October, November mm-hmm. was my top record of the year. And I think why this record hits the way that it does is being someone with mental illness who gave up on his dream of music so long ago to finally be pulled back into it Thanks to you and I getting close 
and us finally wanting to start writing and playing together, right? Um, my number four is Porter Robinson's music or uh, Nurture. Mm-hmm. Musicians, the song that I chose. I'll get into that for uh, uh, for a moment. Porter Robinson's Nurture is a record from a boy that deals with a lot of mental health issues that for a time being didn't even think he'd ever put out another record. He struck it really big with Worlds with the solid five from Fantano. <laughs> um, but he had to pull himself away from his dream and just live life for a little while before he came back to it and wrote one of the best self care records ever. And I know we got a lot of core music and scene music and metal core and screamo and all that shit and various kinds of core and metal and hard rock and stuff on these lists. And people are probably thinking like fucking Porter Robinson. What is this doing on a fucking list? Like, like this, I implore you to listen to it. And if you don't want to listen to it, if it's not your cup of tea, read through the lyrics, read through the lyrics of this record because it, it oozes and bleeds mental health, the good, the bad and the indifferent. It shows the ugly. It shows the bad. It shows that the good it shows. I have musician on here because Porter has said in interviews and when talking about the record, it was the first time when working on nurture, he had fun making music again. And you fucking you can hear, it. hear it. You can hear it. And you hear it live when he plays mm-hmm. it. When he plays it live. Um, and you just hear all of the emotions, even down to songs like blossom. A song about being so in love with someone that for the first time, and it speaks volumes to someone dealing with horrible mental illness, that you're scared to die. And that becomes like a, your significant other going, you don't have to worry about it. Like you're here right now. You know what I mean? Um, to like mirror a song about just being a burden and like the reflection of like, you're only saying that to yourself though. Right. Um, Look at the sky is just a simple reflection of like, I uh, like being like setting the goal of like, literally look at the sky. I'm still here. I'll be around or I'll be alive next year. Right. Which is for people with horrible mental health issues to promise another year to yourself is a big fucking deal. And to have that be the first full song on the record, uh, to even songs like when tempos that like build up and crescendo and you think he's about to get to this big build and then it cuts to one of the most hauntingly beautiful piano pieces with edited vocals to make it sound like it's saying it's so holy, but also it's so haunting at the same time. Or with it's this, so lonely. Or so sometimes. lonely sometimes, depending yeah. on how you hear it. And then, like I said, you've got musician about like the struggle of like, okay, you know, you can write music, whatever. And then having like the chorus cut off with like, I burn up, I burn out. I shouldn't do this to myself. And the only time that chorus full fully realizes itself is, you know, and you can hear what I'm feeling. I can see my life so clearly and I know it doesn't last, but I don't mind at all anymore. Like the fact that you've come to terms with the burnout, but you have fun when you can. And then you realize you start to hit that burnout. You're like, I can't do that. Like, but like being okay with the fact that like, you're not always going to have the, like finding clarity in your creativity isn't always having that clarity. Right. And just, there's so many things like even like nostalgia for family with like mother, you know what I mean? Um, and then songs like unfold and you know, just the, the closing track and just, there's so much, so much on this record. And it was my top record until it got to my last three. And I will explain my quantifier for my last three records, mm-hmm. my top three, as we get to your number three. What my is number your three? Number three. You can probably see it from where you're sitting. Is it? Um, is it the reason? Is it the thing we what? talked about earlier? Huh? The thing we talked about earlier about you playing guitar. Is that your number three? Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Era's self-titled is my number three album. That's so yeah. good. Yeah. Um, there's not a whole lot I can say about it because it's just musically one of the best, like well created and produced and put together like, written. Yeah. Like just, just, just from like a technical guitar kid stance, right. Of just, yeah, it's insane, but I just, I love every single song on it. It's so good. It's so good. It's I don't know what else there is to say about it except that I think we've you, gushed about it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's just 
if you like your melodic progressive metalcore if you want to both punch a dude in the face during a breakdown but also be that kid at the tool concert mm-hmm. listen it has to it has tool ass riffs please please it's listen so to the tool bass riffs so listen to the um, tool bass riffs baby hell yeah um, if that's your fucking jam while you listen to fucking scream vocalists and metalcore breakdowns era is what you want <sighs> era it's is so, so good, good. Yeah. um electric twilight is what i added on here but that's also still acknowledging that vanish canvas is one of the best songs one of the best songs like of all time not even of this record and not even of the year but of all it's songs beautiful in history it's got melody it's got heaviness it's got a little of everything that this scene vanish has canvas is one of my favorite songs in existence it's so good and i like i go back and forth sometimes i listen to the regular mm-hmm. version sometimes i listen to the, the, the version of the corny and the plant and it's like yeah. both are just as good and like ugh, it's it's fantastic yeah. that era record is really good it's like what else can you say what else can you yeah. say that we haven't already gushed about mm-hmm. we already gushed about seeing them live we already gushed about you know, Jesse Cash and his writing mm-hmm. and shit like that. And the fact that I'm going to throw my guitar in a lake because of him. Yep. Love that guy. So good. <laughs> Love that guy. <laughs> throw my guitar in a lake because of him. Yeah. So my number three. Mm-hmm. If, if you, I would say if you didn't have any more else to say about Eric. No. My number three. So the quantifier from my top three records. These are, so my top five were records that I kept coming back to. My top three well, number four and five, I came back to songs based off of moods, based off of emotions, and sometimes they'd warrant going front to back again, other times not so much. These top three are records that I'd hit a song and then another, and then I'm listening to the right, the, I go back and listen to the whole record all over again. All these are, when I would come back to them, I didn't just come back to them for songs. I came back for the whole record. Even if I just had a song in my head, I came back to it. And this, my number three was unexpected it was a record that came out in november it was a record that i did not expect was going to rank as high but was one of those we finished jamming the records we jammed that day and then i went back and listened to it like two or three more Mm -hmm. times and then reading about the background behind it about what the vocalist the 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 one of the vocalists because there's like three different vocalists in this band now uh the the this this the scream vocalists and touch of clean vocals um, my number three is iridescent from silent planet mm-hmm. iridescent from silent planet is something that I mentioned earlier when we talked about those fucking ambient, like creating like ambient horror in a metal core mm-hmm. record. There is so much ambience, even in the heavy songs. I, I put this record on my honorable mentions. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want to say now that I've not given it a fair enough shake. And I'm going to go back to it again. Right. I know I am. This is going to be for you what um, Idola is going to be for me, I feel yeah. like. Um, but it's... I was going to say something. It, my I was going to say, that's okay. I will say, because you talk about records that are difficult listens... Uh, most of this record stemmed from Garrett Russell's stint in a mental hospital. And the song I chose from it is Trilogy. But you could have easily put uh, uh, Percepticon, I think that's how it's called, or Second Son, or Terminal, Liminal, Right, or the title track. And just the whole... This is a man that went through mental hell checked himself in after a horrible breakdown late 2019 comes back early 2020 february 2020 putting out a single going i we put out the single this is a very personal song for me and right when he's on the mend for his mental health pandemic hits and then iridescent comes out of it it is instrumentally it is heavy. Even the slower songs are detuned and heavy, and the ambience is haunting. It literally feels like someone trapped within their own head. But it is done so well that I I love every second of this fucking mm-hmm. record. It I, is. 
beautiful. Go ahead. I was just saying, I know that I loved it, us jamming it together. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, it's just the matter of, once again, I think this is the third one in a grand total of four. We've not mentioned the last one yet. Of the, I know it's good, but I haven't been able to go back to it yet. Not I haven't had the time. I haven't had the ability. Yeah. This is definitely. I haven't had the wherewithal. Yeah. No, it's it's definitely, it is rough in all the good ways. Right. Um, and it's like people said they're wondering like, well, it's like, well, what was too rough about like the Asking Alexandria right record, right? Where that, that one was it hit me at a particular time. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's less the it's less the content messages. more the time it happened. Yeah, no, it was there was some rough shit we were both on fallouts of when that record came out, and it was like, oh fuck, you know. Um, but. This record hit in November, where all things considered, the latter half of 2020 was a rough year for me personally. 2020 was a very hurtful, horrible. I went through, I and I, my therapist has had to have me sit down and uh, look at it. You know, this is my first year finally going to therapy when I've desperately needed it for decades at this point for all that I've been through. But we were ran through the fucking ringer, you and I together and we had to watch each other fall apart right in different ways for different reasons and this whole records concept of being closed in on yourself but having something that's meaningful come out of it at the end of the year when the year finally started to turn a little bit for the better um i think is why this record ranks so fucking high for me um, it is a rough listen. Don't get me wrong, but it is also a needed listen because there were there's commentary about the mental health system. Uh, in fact, it's the song that has a, a Christian listeners very up in arms because of Garrett Russell screaming "fuck the system" over and over again. Which, as a man, of, as he being a man of faith who went through mental hell that he did and everything that he went through, I think he has every right to say "fuck the system" and still keep his faith card. I think he very much has earned it with what he has been through. You know what I mean? Um, and it's it's a record that's got a lot. Finally tying back into some some playlist stuff. Um, Terminal is on is going on a either both trilogy and terminal are breaking my I try to keep one artist per playlist for a character uh, for a current one for my uh, my drow arcane trickster Orgulus who uh, was very much the character I created while in the midst of coming to terms with various forms of past and very recent abuse that I had to go through. Um, and this whole record of being trapped within your head, it just, it hit, it really fucking hit hard. Um, and it was fantastic though. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's why it's one of my favorites and yeah. it is, it is so well done yeah. and shout out to those boys. Shout out to the, and SoCal pride fucking SoCal oh, yeah. band from I think Pasadena. California fucking crank, make cranking out bangers, dude. Breaking your necks with those breakdowns, dude. So good. Yeah. So now it's time for our number two. Yeah. Number two was our meme. On as we came up with the idea of this video, mm -hmm. we would go, Yeah, we need to catch up on records, re listen to sums. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, this record. Yeah, and we would re listen to every it. Every time I would go, All right, I need to work on this thing. I got new stuff to listen to. I got to go back to this other one. And I would open Spotify, and it does that thing where it's just like recommended albums for today. Yeah. And it would yeah. always recommend the same fucking one. Yep. Uh huh. And of course, it's going to keep recommending it because I keep clicking on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Your records for today, or Greg, hey, you've been listening to this. Yes, I have a question for you. Oh, you've got a question. I might have an answer for you. Do you like Ice Nine Kills? Not really. <laughs> I did not think Welcome the Horror Wood would be this high on my list. I knew it are. was going to be good. Here we are. Do you for a lot of recent time, it was number one. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. For, for just given how much I listened to it and how much I enjoyed it, it was number one. Until we finally listened to what became my number one. Mm -hmm. 
it was also my number one. Yeah. And then my number one hit and I went, uh oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the thing that this record is such an outlier because all of these other records, some form of mental health record, some sort of personal tie as far mm-hmm. as the, like relating to lyrical content and stuff like that. Yeah. If you were to say on paper, mm hmm. That a kid obsessed with horror films Mm -hmm. was going to write a metalcore opera Mm -hmm. that is all references to horror films Mm -hmm. that tell a a story about a potential murder. I would not fucking believe you and I'd say get the fuck out of here. That's the most gimmicky shit I've ever fucking heard. And then you tell me on that same paper that you were going to feature corpse grinder for cannibal corpse Mm -hmm. and also have john feldman from goldfinger Mm -hmm. produce a couple songs i'd be like what are you fucking on about that sounds Mm -hmm. garbage Mm -hmm. all of that is welcome to horrorwood and it fucking works (laughs) it's so good it is every song is a certified banger it is every song from the i'm calling it the opening number yeah. Of Welcome to Horrorwood mm-hmm. to the closing number of Farewell to Flesh. Mm-hmm. And then, like, everything from, like, the fucking Brendan Yuri ass shit on <laughs> fucking uh, shower scene mm-hmm. to the fucking. The, there, it's, it's a, a rash decision is a ska song. You, yeah. It's what it is. Mm-hmm. A rash decision is a ska heart. Core. Ska core song mm-hmm. is what it is. Um, to like fucking having Jacoby Shaddix on mm-hmm. fucking Hip to Be Scared. Um, oh my god, Brandon Sailor from a tray on the chorus of the box. Um, it's there's everything is a certified fucking banger. It's fucking so good. Rainy day is really good. Rainy day is so good. Worst vacation that they Rammstein wrote, I would ass say they song. wrote the best Rammstein song of twenty twenty one. They did. Um, the fucking Southern Fried Jam of X Mortis is so good. It was groovy. Oh, it's, it's groovy. So good. Um, to easily their best chorus they've ever written mm-hmm. with Farewell to Flush. Mm-hmm. To the fact that, that the original Candyman, the actor for Candyman, Tony Todd, Tony Todd yeah. tweeted saying that it was a fantastic yeah. song. Um, Funeral fucking derangements. One uh, of my favorite breakdowns of the year was Funeral so Derangements. Um, Take Your Pick with Corpse Grinder is one of my favorites. Oh my it's, God. it's so good oh my god uh it's so brutal if you were to tell me buddy from census fail and corpse grinder from cannibal corpse would feature on the same record i wouldn't believe you and they did and they're so good it's so good and it, it's just it's it's a metalcore opera it's a metalcore opera the songs flow together perfectly their placement on the record makes perfect fucking sense it the features fantastic the songs that don't have features fucking fantastic the record grooves everything is a certified fucking banger Mm -hmm. there was a review that i read that they listed a con of the record was could have had a couple slower songs on there and i remember i read that out to you and mira which by the way this is mira's favorite record of the year they didn't listen to too many records but this was their favorite record of the year (laughs) <laughs> Mira just if you couldn't hear Mira just shouted this was my only record of the year but the fact that we all looked and said no it didn't need any it didn't need another grave mistake or love bites on it it was just the fact that it's like well these this is like a horrifying brutal record that's tied to the the slaying of the Spencer Charnas's fiance which is all just the story mind mm-hmm. you it's all just the story yeah. none of this is an actual murder it's just the fucking yet. story mm, here's the thing Bill Mosley's not proven anything yet here's the thing Spencer Charnas can murder me oh, have you seen him lick the knife though take your pick is a romance and you cannot change my mind <laughs> To those who cannot hear that, take your pick as a romance and you cannot change their mind. Listen, it is, it is, it is so good. It is, it had no reason. It had no reason to be this good. And like, here's the thing. I knew it was going to be good. I knew it was going to be 
really good. <laughs> and then it came out. Like, their early work was a little too seen for me. <laughs> but, when but when the Silver the Screen, screen two, 2 came, came out... out um no i i missed silver screen like i missed it i knew them before they started the horror you knew them before even the record with like i knew i knew them when they were a little too seen and i loved them yeah um but when they when they were less like horror core staples mm -hmm. right and they were like they were just a cd i found at hot topic right yeah. yeah Like you um, saw the I, I saw the album cover and I went, he looks cute. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he looks cute. And you went, yeah. Oh, there's a banger. Hell yeah. Um, but Silver Scream Two, I love all the reviews that basically preface the review with the hook of "Sit back for the sequel of your dreams" because everyone loved. Mm -hmm. It's literally the the everyone, everyone liked, liked that. that. <laughs> it's literally what it was, and there's so yeah. many people saying it's their it's their album of the year. It almost was. It almost was mine. It's justifiable. It is so good. It is amazing. I hope I get to see them live. I mean, we got tickets. We got it's tickets. Good. We'll see how pandemic pans out. Um, but. Silver Scream 2 was our second. You and I mm -hmm. both have records. We both have top, records. That are our top records of the year. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let you go first. Oh, okay. What is Kit's favorite record of 2021 in a video that is three hours too long? <laughs> My back hurts. Um, <laughs> here's the thing. Is it Mastodon's Crack the Sky? Was Fangham's correct? Was it Mastodon's Crack the Sky? My favorite record. 2021. Mm -hmm. I wish I could actually make this joke, but, but unfortunately the re-recording of uh, We Stitch These Wounds came out the year prior. No! Um, oh, damn it. Hey, everyone. Editing Greg here. So uh, Kit really fucked up on this list. Uh, he was as as he likes to call a fucking uh, a dingus donut. Donut. He was a donut. Uh, where he talked about Blackville Brides re-recording. Uh, st uh, we stitched these wounds when he completely forgot, and he, that fact that he listened to the new record that came out in 2021. He was too busy being a fucking 2010s emo kid re-listening to We Stitch These Wounds. So. One of the songs is on his playlist. He's a donut, and he should not have forgotten. Uh, I'm subtracting 10 emo points from you. Knives and Pins is still a banger. Fight me. I ain't going to fight you. I agree. I listened to that a lot this year, though. You did. Um, you did. No, you did. <laughs> My top album of 2021 was... Stuff. Radical by Every Time Cass, I Die. Yes, it was. Um, I have made sure to not have you explain why it was the top record. And you've kind of hinted at it. You've kind of said some things. Yeah. But I want to know. Why oh is this your top Don't record? Don't get of your hopes up too high because I'm not good at this. It's fine. Um, I'm the one who talks too much. Listen. <laughs> you're the one who actually has something to say. And I'm the one who's like, oh, no, it's good. Um, it slaps. It's it good. It slaps. Um, it's only it's, music. Why you have to explain? <laughs> song structure every time i die never fails to make an interesting song yeah um, right yeah they don't make the same metalcore song they don't make the same song you know what i mean yeah no there yeah, are yeah. people that you could argue there are bands that it's like, yeah, this is a band that I like and you could still argue. They just make what the genre is. Mm, and every right. time I die, never does that. No. They know how to make something interesting yeah. and new and unique. Um, and they continue to do it every single time you touched on that idea of how can they possibly make something better? And then they do Yeah, every single time. Yeah. Um, I knew as early as the first singles for this album, I was like, Oh, this is going to be good. Yeah. I already know it. I already yeah. know it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, we got a wall, I think was the first one that 
to come out or AWOL was it was either AWOL um, or the uh, um uh Desperate Pleasures and Both uh, of those were um, fucking amazing. Yeah. Like, it, so good. Um, it was so good. But I heard post boredom. And I heard planet shit. And I heard the thing with feathers. And I heard all this and more. And it just it it's it's so good. There's just it's so good. There's just it's shit that like hits different, mm-hmm. right? And there's you know, you kind of briefly mentioned it when I was talking about it, but like your thing about post board and the thing that hit you was like it's a song about new beginnings, right? Yeah. Yeah, that and feeling of not just new beginnings, but also the feeling of like killing the old, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's not just the like, oh, the flowery new beginnings. It's the like, mm. no, put, <laughs> put them down. Yeah. Like old, you know, Fucking whatever. Yeah. It's, old yellow, your old shit. Exactly. You know? Um, In a time of, in a very transitional time for me about to say any very Um, important transitional big changes period of time for you yeah absolutely um with you know reading about it the song itself coming in a time of like yeah you know it just came from this and then also being like and then pandemic man how that worked out and then oops i got kind of kind (laughs) of a major life change also happened and yeah you know you'll look back on the song and it fits better and you know Mm -hmm, yeah just all these different things but also as a a stunted creative and yeah someone gone through quite a weird living situation um someone who has struggled with mental health creating things um doing anything at all failure to live yeah really you know um just a lot of weird ways that i found you could pick it up like a weird puzzle piece twisted around oh it fits here twist around oh it fits here twist it oh it fits here yeah. um post boredom ended up being one of my top songs of all time like yeah it's, it's, yeah it's post boredom is so good and it's just an amazing fun like amazing fucking song it is, yeah um it slaps it fucks um yeah uh planet shit and honestly most of radical um comes across like something that for a tiny bit of uh context and history um a project that i had with a certain someone that came into my life right um number one a big weird uh just to just to throw it out there we mentioned uh some themes of silent planets album yes and you know you talk about eras of each other's lives that we've had to apply to it um to just slap on a time of may of 2020 for me yeah um mark that with the events of june yeah 2020 Mm -hmm. um and the immediate um reaction to that was me and someone having a project we were working on that radical comes across as the album where someone with actual skill and talent and taste (laughs) created in its most perfect form what me and him could only have ever hoped to make right yeah um is yeah. all that I can, it's the only way I can think to phrase it. Yeah, um, no. And it just connects with everything. Yeah, no, I so get it. Yeah. So, in this essay, no, it's, I'm. <laughs> in this essay, yeah, in that conclusion. Was my yeah. In no, conclusion, yeah. I, I fucking loved Radical so much that I bought it for you for Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> it's so good. And we jammed it. <laughs> we did. Oh. So good. Yeah, it's and I can imagine now. Now it makes sense to me the pieces kind of fit in mm-hmm. as to why, for you, that is your top record with how it connects to things that you had been through and were going through and transitional shit mm-hmm. and like there's a lot of things that connect and for I'm, like the last I'm year and still, a half. Yeah, I'm still in a transitional period and I'm still trying to kill the old me that doesn't make it do anything right. and I'm still trying to. 
Yeah, slowly but surely. You know? It's not an easy process. I so get it. Hey, editing Greg. Um, either either this goes in uh before I talk about my top record of the year, or it goes in after. Either way, if it goes in before, then I have to quantify this as um uh later on in this video, I'm gonna talk about something relating to the fact that I did a, a project with someone and things that we worked on. Uh, but something that I wanted to throw in, we talked about. Um, cover songs when we were talking about singles things of that nature and something that I neglected to put on my list to talk about because it just popped up on my Spotify one day and I went well what the fuck uh, and it made me really happy and the reason why uh -huh. I brought up the other thing while wow, I'm talking a lot is because um, it, it, it's a cover song that is also a song that me and the, the other person that I had this project with it was one of our 80s covers that uh -huh. we were considering Right. In our list of 80s covers. Mm -hmm. um, so shout out to Crosses for their cover of Goodbye Horses. Oh, A legitimately yes. good song. Yes. Yes. I still, not have, I still have not listened to it yet. I need to listen. I'm going to listen to Please. it after we're done recording. So my number one. Mm -hmm. I... This one kind of snuck up on me. As we were kind of getting to the, the end of the year, I was kind of auditing lists of some people's initial reactions and like what are what are some of the best records of the year what are some of our favorite things and we were seeing a lot of things like gojira and there was a lot of comments of people talking about like ice and kills uh some of the more like scene uh like scene places like like alt press were saying things like some people were shouting out like sea space cowboy um there were quite a few people that labeled that named this record as this is their their peak. This is the the, the best thing that they have put out. Um, arguably controversial for the scene that it comes from, but obviously one of the best. Like it's it's their best and one of the best releases of the year. And I went to you and we listened to this record and Gojira in the mm -hmm. same day. And one of those records did not live up to the expectations, which is Gojira. And the other one, track one, three minutes in, I'm messaging you going, this is special. <laughs> this is special. Uh, and then track two, your, your comment will never leave my mind of <laughs> my prog metal heart is soaring for these death core boys. Mm -hmm. And it is a record that while personally, I've never been to this through, through this trial, through what the vocalist wrote this in their prior record about, um, you felt the bleeding emotion. You felt the story being told and it's told in just a fantastical way to where you can also make connections to different things. And God damn it. Did I not expect this to be my number one, but when it became my daily ritual for the last about two months now that, all right, it's time to listen to this record again. That's why Kin from Whitechapel is my favorite record of the year. There is something so special about, especially the last time I listened to Whitechapel, it was so ironic. That day was a day of revisiting old bands. Because Gojira, I hadn't listened to in 2008, since 2008. I hadn't listened to Whitechapel since like, this is Exile era of 2008 of like super deathcore. I remember seeing the interviews of Phil Bozeman like trashing on like Suicide Silence when they made the really not good new metal record, right? Which is not me bashing on new metal, just bashing on that record because it wasn't a good new metal record. Sorry. Um, I'm glad they kind of went back to form after that record and they kind of like, well, yeah, we misstepped. All right, cool. Um, but to see. Phil Bozeman specifically shine on this record. Um, and I remember messaging you and all of a sudden he started singing. I, cause I hadn't listened to the Valley. Like I said, I hadn't listened to them since this is exile. So I didn't know that on the Valley he had started singing, mm. uh, which the Valley is the part one of this record, which yeah. is about the death of his mother. Um, and part two is like him. So like for a little bit of context of this record, Phil Bozeman lost his father when he was 10 and his mother when he was 
15 and his is you know there's a lot of mental health issues with his mom and when his dad died his mom kind of went into a spiral and then met this uh piece of fucking garbage that got her hooked on drugs and she died from drug use and uh there's a lot of like i guess on the valley uh there's a song about young phil dreaming about killing his stepfather and stuff like that which ties into uh, a song on this record uh blood soak symphony um but that first record is like the events and the initial falling out of things happening uh and this is a record of confronting your angry younger self it, or your angry self, I should say. It's going through this trauma and this pain. Um, and on the one hand, the anger and vitriol and bitterness that comes with it to the depressed and mentally unwell and suicidal shit. And the like leading to the end of this record, the statement of the title track being the ability to finally start letting go. And while the story itself is something I've never been through, the general ideas of trauma and pain and the anger, both in very past traumas and current traumas, the amount of times you'd hear me mid mental breakdown screaming, I want to slit this person's fucking throat. I want to like chop them limb from fucking limb. Right. Of just you're manic and you're angry and you're upset and then you get angry at yourself and want to fucking take a knife to your own fucking throat because you should have fucking known better. And you just want to be back to like these people or these times, like be away from the pain and, you know, for, for, for Phil Bozeman, be back to the people that he loved and cared about and stuff like that. And it was, it's just, it is so expertly crafted and written and musically incredible and the instrumentation is fantastic they know when to be heavy for the story to be heavy and they know when to be soft and the story is soft um phil's singing is incredible as well as his like very articulate screaming which he's always been known for um the fucking bass tones of like blood soaked symphony right are just really fucking just it's it's heavy like when it's heavy and it grooves it's heavy and it fucking grooves like it is ridiculous how heavy this record gets even in the soft songs how emotionally heavy this gets so it's already a special record right it's already an important record but we talk about why a record lands at the top of somebody's list is sometimes it's just the place and time and the mindset you are when it falls into your lap. I've had to remove some videos from this channel, but unfortunately there are still videos that reference the project that you and I met doing the individuals associated with that project being as horrible abusive dismissive horrid hypocritical um putting me down one of the worst mental health spirals i had been in in a very long time in a time where um to keep it loose and not uh, suppressed by YouTube, I will say drew blood for the first time in 10 years, um, where I was so traumatized by everything that happened with this group of people that it kicked my ass into gear to finally start going to fucking therapy. And the sad thing about that project falling apart was it was a D&D series. And, but the character I created was a character I had had for years. And it was a tiefling bard Nicholas song. And when we left and the game fell apart and everyone kind of fucked off and did whatever, you and I kind of went, especially after you moved out here, of, well, we're going to take these characters and we're going to make them our own. I mean, they were already ours to begin with. But we're going to strip all of the bullshit that's not ours and we're going to tell their story the way that we want to in the form of we're all say we're working on a comic um and 
I have struggled so hard. Number one with so little background, having to water down this character for the game that we played. The only thing that I can say that is not a knock at this group of people was there were some people that weren't comfortable with the heavier side of this character's story. The way that this character, this character, his parents were killed when he was young um, and being this bard, he kind of came from an archetype of, I created him like a year and a half after Chester Bennington died, kind of the archetype of this guy that seems upbeat and fun loving but you hear any word that he sings and there's like a million years it feels like a million years worth of pain behind it and it comes from losing his parents to very hateful people to his anger and vindictiveness about the whole situation to bumming it around being a little kid until finding a place at a bar and being brought in by you know a, a barkeep uh, and then finding music, and that's where he found his solace, but also found his mental illness. Uh, and literally right before the game started, which I had to redact, uh, and uh, 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 trying to uh, lose all your diamonds in Minecraft, as you would say. Um, and there were missing pieces because I couldn't tell the whole story. And I, we finally, the thing falls apart. I'm going through my own pain about it. And then all of a sudden... We're like, all right, cool. Well, we're going to work on this thing. We're going to work on this thing. But right when we start working on it, I stop and I struggle. And I'm like, but it's still theirs. It's still tied to this. It's still tied to theirs. The icing on the cake of this record, Ken, was this record reminded me that Nick is my character. It filled in so many spots that were missing, not just from what I had written, but from what was taken away from this character, right? And this record has single-handedly helped me remember that something I created is mine and not anyone fucking else's because the story resonates with that character almost to a fucking T. And it's, it's why this record hit the way that it did for me. And it's why it's that important. And it's why I didn't expect it to be my top record. Um, but not only is it a, to be my conclusionary sentence on it, not only is it a wonderfully written record with wonderfully crafted lyrics and wonderfully crafted music, both on the heavier end and the lighter end, and just a wonderfully put together front to back record that flows perfectly but came at a time when I was struggling to reclaim something that is mine and have it resonate so much that it reminded me, no, this is yours. <laughs> You're allowed to have this. And um, yeah, that's why that, that's why for many reasons, why white chapels kin is my record of 2021. So now we're at the end. Mm -hmm. Um, we talked about 2021 before we wrap up real quick. What are you excited for, for 2022? Bad omens. Yeah. Dude, um, we, we get a one, two, three punch mm -hmm. of in one month mm -hmm. under oath mm -hmm. corn bad mm -hmm. omens. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for all three of those. Yeah. More bring me the horizon. Yeah. They're, um, they're hard at work in LA working on uh post human too. dance Gavin dance yep they've got new music who are hoping was. Mm -hmm. listen andrew wells might be announced as an official full member who knows um, um God, i'm excited to reclaim goth club shit i'm sure yeah. there's more dark wave to behold on the horizon oh i'm sure i'm i am excited for all of that i am excited for us to write an ep <laughs> I'm excited but, for new birthday massacre. Something else reclaimed. You'll have to you have to show that to me. I'm definitely excited for that. I want a new bad omens to bring me. Uh new slipknot should be coming spring twenty twenty two. Um I'm just really excited. I'm just excited. There's I'm just all, excited. I'm just excited, yeah. Um, so that was very long. Yeah. But uh, I think this was fun. Put this on as a podcast if you haven't already. So thank you guys so much. Um, Get better taste in podcasts. Yeah, it's us. We suck, dude. Listen. 
But thank you guys so much. Hope you guys are taking care. Uh, shit's getting wild again out in the world. So stay safe. Take care of yourselves. We love you guys. And uh, I love you too. Uh, Fangums definitely loves you. Yeah.